Well, hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you have graced us with your presence, thank you, super happy to have you here. The way this works is super simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answers, sometimes I do not, but either way, either way, we have an awesome time talking about Lawn care. All right, so let's see who we have in the live stream tonight. Guys, it's, it's, we're definitely on a warming trend. I think today is going to be the last really cold night for a while, at least here in Georgia, and then we should be on a nice warming trend. So uh, so let's see. Let's see who we got here. Uh, first up, we got Clint Brock in the house. He says, and actually, you know, before I do that, before I do that, we're going to make sure that, let me get my show sponsor up. So Patrick in Texas, before the show started, before the live stream started, um, gave a super chat. So let me just take care of that first and foremost before we get too much into the show. And so I can find you here, Patrick. I don't, there it is. So a super chat from Patrick, sponsor time. Yes, yes indeed, super sir. Received. Thank you for all the love and support and your name in lights for what it means to you. So thank you for sponsoring the show. You're the first one tonight. Appreciate it. All right, so our first question or comment of the evening comes from Clint Brock. He says, hey Ron, thanks for the email reply. Went too heavy on the dethatching last year and slowed growth in some places. Only light turf raking this year. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. I mean, I got to tell you, I, uh, you know, you guys know that that really it was the middle of last year when I got the C27, got into, you know, doing a lot of the cultural practices, turf raking, verticutting, doing that stuff more regularly and really liked the results. So I am, um, you know, I, I'm with you in the sense that, you know, Dethatching is a, is really aggressive, and most lawns I think don't necessarily need it. I think like a, a, a solid turf raking um, or multiple rounds of that will produce a great result. But it all depends. Every every lawn is different. So guys, tonight we're coming to you from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Instagram Live. We are on there now. I see Harful Fashion in the house. Uh, what's going on, guys? Hopefully you're doing well, Granger. All right. So next up we have um, Jason. So he was had a question about um, spectacle flow. So. Um, a question that, that Clint is, is saying here at Jason, you got to try spectacle next year. I had literally have one weed, um, in my typically weed filled lawn. So what there was, was a sidebar before the show started where, uh, Jason was talking about, you know, he's fighting some POA, some, um, some issues with that. He's using some certain to get rid of it. And he, uh, you know, Clint's just talking about spectacle. It's a great product. Like I said, as, as far as, as far as a 
a pre-emergent that that is, in my opinion, on warm season grass is about as good as it gets for POA. It's really hard to beat Spectacle. It's really hard to beat Spectacle Flow. It's a great, it's a great, great product. Um, you know, again, I'm not just saying that. I don't even sell it. It's a, it's just good. As, as, as if you're looking for the the best for warm season turf in the fall time uh, for POA, it's really hard to beat Spectacle. So I'm glad you get good results with that, Clint. All right, so we got a question here on the gram. Let's switch back over here from Hot Rod Fashion. He says, should I catch my clippings when scalping my Bermuda or simply mulch them? I would I would, um, would, would catch them, uh, Granger. I would not mulch them. Because remember, the idea behind scalping is to remove a lot of the excess debris out of the lawn, right? It's, it's, the, the goal of it is to remove the thatch and to um, to remove all that, that grass that's just built up over the late fall and winter months. So to kind of get to clean the lawn out, allow some heat, sunlight to get down to the grass, the soil, warm things up and, and really uh, get get the season going, right? So by cutting the lawn, by scalping the lawn, just allowing all that just to go right back in, I mean, it's not terrible, but you're really, you're not getting a lot of the benefits of scalping. So absolutely, I would, I would catch all your clippings. I mean, even if you don't do it year round, if you don't do it throughout the entire year, when you're scalping is a good idea to catch your clippings. Now, if you, if you've already done it, and you haven't, you catch your clippings in the, in the process. If you have a turf rake, I think you have an outlet. So if you have a turf rake, you can get up there with a turf rake and you can use that to pick up all, all that all that debris. So fortunately for you, you have a mower to be able to clean up a lot of uh, a lot of debris in your lawn. But for anyone else that's watching, if you're going to scalp your lawn, if you're planning to do it this year, you absolutely want to catch your clippings. Don't just don't cut the lawn and just blow all that debris right back into the lawn. You want to cut it and get that stuff out. That's the uh, that's where you get a lot of the benefits of uh, of scalping your lawn. Great question, sir. Thanks. And any of you guys that are here on the gram, feel free to participate as well. Just because you're not on YouTube, although you should be on YouTube because that's you know when you get your show, your question on the on the uh, on the channel, so everyone else can see it. But if you are only on Instagram, that's fine too. Feel free to ask your question, and I will also work through those as well. All right, Michael Klein is up next. He says, hey Ron, thanks for all your help. Much appreciated. Soil has been very wet over the month. Worried about root rot in spots and seeing algae for the first time. Best way to knock out the algae. There are products you can use for it. Um, you can use even if you want like a home remedy, you can take uh, dish dish soap like Dawn and um, and water. So like Dawn, it's, I think the, the remedy that um, that Devin told me was, uh, was like five ounces of Dawn in um in a five gallon bucket of water and that will do a lot for for breaking it up for, for moss and algae um the thing is though it's a wet time of the year uh michael so here now that we're, we're getting on a warming trend if that if that area i mean you can you can do this right you can do you can do the home remedy you can go out you can actually get treatments for algae if you want but if normally that part of the lawn doesn't um you don't have algae in you know march april may like throughout the regular growing season when when days are longer temps are warmer I might just let it go. I might not even worry about it and just wait for things to warm up and have it go away. If you want to treat it, you can. Um, but I, the only time I would really get concerned is if it's something where um, it's it's a persistent part of your of your lawn. It sounds like it's something that you're just experiencing because of all the uh, the, the wet weather you've been having and you know water taking a little bit longer to drain in that that area. So again, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, but if you want to, there's an inexpensive home remedy uh, to help to help knock it out. All right, guys. So. Some fun news, some good news. So last week, uh, you guys know we were out of Essential G. We were out of the new um, fertilizer, the new uh, Miramichi Organic. Both those are in stock now. They're both launched. The new Organic from Miramichi Green, the new Hotness is live. You guys can get it on, at the Golf Course Lawn Store. And Essential G is also back in stock, as well as Turfplex, as well as Nutrizol. There's only like one liquid fertilizer I'm really missing at this point. So really, you guys should be good to go to get to you know to, to get all your, your supplies uh, for the season. So I'm happy that we, that was able to happen. And, um, you know, the, the new fertilizer should be pretty awesome. Can't wait to see the results you guys get in, uh, in your lawns when using it. All right. Uh, Steven Thompson is up next. He says, excited to try some PGR this year. Do you have traction issues with the mowers in your front yard? No, not really. Um, so as far as, um, if I had to rate them as far as how well they work on, on the sloped front yard, the true cut is the best because it has the, the rubber tire. So it's just got better traction. Uh, after that is the Greensmaster. That does a really good job. Believe it or not, the Greensmaster is actually works better when the grass is green. There's a little bit of moisture in it. It just it doesn't slide around nearly as much as when it the lawn is very thatchy, when it's just dry, right? And then uh, in last place is the Allet, uh, the C27, mainly because it's the weight. It's a it's a very heavy machine. I mean, you're talking about a machine that's like the, on the on the thick end of 300 pounds. Um, so it's just a lot to maneuver and handle on a slope. But they all work on a slope. The one that I use for cutting the lawn throughout the growing season primarily is the Greensmaster. 
like if, I, if I'm gonna do some, any kind of scalping, I'll use the true cut for that. If I'm cutting like the swale area and, and areas in the back line that are, are a little bit narrower, that's what I'll use the true cut for. But for the most part, the front line is cut with the greens master and the back line and side line and the vanity strip are cut with the allet. So uh, so yeah, they, they all work well, uh, Steven. Uh, and as far as PGR, I'll tell you, I, I, I gotta warn you, the only thing about PGR I'll tell you is this. There's life before PGR and there's life after PGR. Once you start using Growth Regulator, start introducing Primo into your lawn care program, you're gonna wonder why it took you so long. And there's just tons and tons of benefits about it. So um, so stay tuned next week. I should have a, um, a blog post. It'll be some fun reading along with some tips and tricks in there on Growth Regulator, on PGR. So feel free to check that out. Um, I mean, when it comes out, it'll be next week. I'll, uh, so in the live stream next week, I'll definitely let you guys know about it, but it will likely come out um, before then. But yeah. Hopefully that helps answer your questions, sir. Uh, definitely get on, on the PGR bandwagon. It's great stuff. As far as uh, tips that I can just tell you is that the rates for Plant Growth Regulator are very low. They're going to seem low compared to uh, a lot of other products that you might be used to. Like compared to fertilizer, it's the, the application rates, the amount of this product that you use is much less. Trust the rates. Trust the label. Um, the, you don't need to go heavier than the label rates, and you're going to get a great result with it. Um, something that I like to do is to do a split application. So for example, if you have Bermuda grass, right? The application rate for Bermuda is uh, 0.25. We'll say, we'll make it easy. We'll say it's between 0.25 and um, just under 0.4 uh, ounces um, with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet for hybrid Bermuda anyway, right? So what you can do is if you apply that in one setting, beginning of the month, that's going to give you three to four weeks of regulation depending on rain, heat, that type of thing. Um, but, but one of the negatives is you can get um, a, um, a, a side effect called tip burn, where if you apply the, the growth regulator a couple days later, you can get some, some mild yellowing. It really only lasts until the next time you mow, and then it doesn't come back and you're good to go. A way to avoid that altogether is to simply mix, is a couple ways you can do it. You can do, uh, you can take the, the, the monthly rate and cut it in half. So let's say you have a four gallon backpack sprayer. Um, which covers 4,000 square feet, 0.25 times four is one ounce. So that one ounce would be your rate that you would cover, would use for the entire month. If you're doing the split application technique, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that one ounce rate, cut it in half, so you're gonna apply 0.5, so I'll show you here, because this has a nice this nice handy uh, measuring cut built into it. You'd apply 0.5 fluid ounces of Primo, that much, with four gallons of water on the first, and the same thing, 0.5 half an ounce, again on the 15th. That's gonna produce a great result. You're gonna get good regulation. You're not gonna get the chip burn. The only negative is you gotta be out there twice in a month, which if you're watching this the, this live stream, I don't think you being out in the lawn is too much of a problem. So, but be sure to watch that, that look out for that blog post next week. I've also got content on PGR. So hopefully that is, uh, is helpful to you. All right, next up is Mr. Jason Harrison. He says, can't make the show tonight. I'm watching Quantumania with my family. Just wanted to say hi to the community. Awesome, awesome, man. That looks really good. Here's the thing, I gotta tell you, I'm a, I'm a Marvel fan, but I have never been able to get into the Ant-Man series really that much, right? Quantumania looks really good though. So you have to let me know how it is and if it's worth uh, if it's worth checking out, you know? So uh, so yeah, that one, the, the, the trailer for that one looks looks pretty legit. All right, next up is Jim. He says, hi, Ron. I've been spraying Next Humic 12 and RGS on a monthly schedule on my cool season lawn. Would Nutrizolve liquid micronutrients be a good replacement for the Next products? Uh, it depends on which ones you're talking about. So Nutrizolve is a liquid micronutrient. So you think about like your um, iron, zinc, manganese, um, uh, copper, boron. That is what it is designed to supplement in your lawn. If you're looking to replace uh, like Humic 12 and RGS, what I would say you're gonna to wanna to go with is something like the carbon kit. So I'll show you really quick here. You go to shop and go to um, um, Miramichi Biosimulants. And then under there, you'll see uh, the carbon kit. This is what I would, if you're gonna talking about those products like uh, the Humic product and also the Root Growth Simulator, I would get um, the, the Release Zero version of it because it doesn't like you want anything with fertilizer in it. Uh, I would get this, this kit. So what in this, you've got three different products. You have Release Zero, which is 10% micronized carbon product. So you can think of it as um, an accelerator for anything that you apply to your lawn as far as mixing with fertilizer, with um, herbicides. It helps that work better in addition to, to really promoting healthy soil biology. So you think of it as, as a way of just of improving nutrient uptake. Uh, the other component of it is Nutri-Kelp. So you've got Release Zero, 
which is 10% micronized carbon. NutriKelp is 2% micronized carbon. So some of the same stuff that's in release zero, but you also get 24% kelp with this, right? So kelp is an overall um, great addition to your soil for the same purpose, improving that microbial activity helps your soil and fertilizer work better. Makes, makes whatever you apply, you get more out of it. And then finally rounding out the trifecta is biospectrum, which is a microbial food for your lawn. So, this, so these three, these three all come together in this kit. Um, if you get, you have it in two sizes, a 5,000 square foot um, lawn, three applications, or a 10,000 square foot lawn, three applications. So you can see what it comes with. And if you're looking for something to replace those, this is what I would use. It's an excellent, it's an excellent kit, been very well received. Um, and you can you can feel free to spray that anytime you're spraying liquids on your lawn. So if you use it, if you're adding fertilizer, like turf plex or anything else that you're using, you can mix that with it. Um, I'll tell you that combination is what I spray along with my growth regulator and turf plex if I'm spraying that on, on my lawn. So that that goes down, that goes gets applied every every couple of weeks um, on my lawn. So I hope that helps, Jim. It's a great question. It's uh, Nutrizolve is, is purely a micronutrient. I actually can show you the difference here. While this is a better replacement for those which you're talking about, Nutrizolve. If we look at that really quick here under the long fertilizer section, this is purely a micronutrient product. So if you look at what's in it, um, again, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc. Uh, so this is this is this is purely to help fill in those micronutrients, the the, the nutrients that are, are difficult to find oftentimes in fertilizer. This has all of them. So it would not be a replacement for the products that you're talking about, but it's it's a great it's a great addition to your to your program, but it would not replace um, Humic 12 or RGS. The carbon kit is what I would use uh, for, for that. Great question. So we got a question here from Instagram. He says, where's Alex? I haven't seen him on your video since the meetup. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there hasn't been a whole lot to talk about, right? I mean, I, other than turf raking, we were out there, um, we were out there doing some work on his lawn, turf raking his lawn uh, last month. If you looked at some of the YouTube shorts, you saw that, uh, Granger. So yeah, but he's still around, still doing great. Um, I'm sure you'll see more of him once the season kicks off and he's out there mowing more. But yeah, he's uh, he's still doing well. He's uh, he's doing um, just fine. He might even be in the live stream tonight. You know, he likes to come in here and uh, and and lurk and say hi to everyone. So don't don't be surprised if he stops by. Natalia is in the house. What's going on, Nat? Thanks for coming to hang out. Appreciate you. All right. Next up is 007 Lawn, not 007 Bond. 007 Lawn it says. Keep up the great work, Ron. As always, a pleasure to be to uh, to be able to continually learn from you. Uh, I even started my own lawn care business. Awesome! Congrats for that. Congrats on starting your own business. I appreciate you and still look up to you. Literally, <laughs> well, thanks, man. I mean, I am I am. I mean, not super tall, but I'm I'm like six four. So I I look I am taller than most people. So I I I, uh, I get the joke. Um, congrats on starting your business. If I can help with anything, let me know. And I appreciate you coming to hang out here tonight and uh, and giving all the support. So. That's, uh, that's really awesome. All right, Andrew Phillips is in the house. He says, good evening, Ron and all. Happy Friday. And then next up we got is Jermaine Patrick. He says, L last time I asked a question, it was about an early application of fertilizer, of triple 10. You said it was too early. Now that we're close to March, when should, be, should now be a good time to apply? Here's what I would say, Jermaine, is look at your lawn. If your lawn, if you're seeing green in your lawn, if you're starting to see some green in your lawn, and you're about to the point where you can get out there and you're gonna start mowing it, then you can then it's fine to introduce fertilizer. So I've got a little bit of green in my lawn. I mean, a, a small little patch, you know what I mean? Not, not a whole, whole lot, but I got a little patch coming in here and, and some other areas of the lawn. So if you're seeing, if your lawn's starting to look like that throughout the entire lawn, where you're seeing green that's coming in to where, you know, you're, you're, you're 60, 70% green, where you have, for lack of a better term, the green fuzz over your lawn. It's not brown anymore, but you can see like it's like it's like green, greenish brown, like all throughout the lawn. That's a good time to, to, to consider um, introducing your fertilizer. But if it's still largely dormant, I would wait a bit longer. Um, we're in mid February, so I, you know I, I would be more inclined to say that the second week of March is more closer along the lines of when you would uh, you be looking to start fertilizing. Again, assuming you're in the southeast United States, assuming you scalp, assuming your lawn's greening up. Again, let your lawn, let what you're seeing be your guide as, as, as far as to when you want to start uh, introducing any kind of fertilizer. So if you're in Florida, you know, triple 10, you might be doing that already. If you're in Georgia, unless, I mean, if you're my neighbor, not quite yet, not quite yet. Not, not time isn't just quite yet to, to get going with that. So hope that helps, sir. All right, Joseph Roberts is up next. He says, good evening and happy Friday. What's going on, Joseph? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, Jermaine is saying three minutes till showtime. So guys, for some reason, here's the thing. So the software that I use, right, for live streaming, they have been doing some updates to it to where, where this offers like multicasting and all this kind of stuff now. So it's got some cool features they added, but one of the things that it broke and they, and they need to fix it um, is 
for some reason, the first few comments, like they get jumbled, the order they come in. So some of you guys that are here in the live stream are saying, hey, this my comment was before this one. Like once we get about 10 minutes in, it settles out, but that's why I'm, I'm answering some of these questions, some of these uh, comments uh, that may have come after yours first, because that's the way it's being presented to me in the software. I apologize. Hopefully they'll fix it soon, but that is what is uh, is going on. All right, Jermaine Patrick says, for those living in Georgia, will you have classes or a meet and greet? As far as classes, we the, the closest thing to that is the Golf Course Lawn Academy. So if I can show you that, we have a, we do have a paid course. Um, you can see the details of it here on the store. So if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, it's a pinned link there. If you go to golfcourselawn.store and then just click on Academy and then go to Course Details, you find out everything that's in it, like what you get. Um, the cool, one of the coolest aspects, in addition to the to the content, which is um, condensed and and, and get, really gets you on your way as far as creating a golf course lawn, is the community, the private Facebook group that you get access to, right? So there's a really cool group of guys and gals that are in there, uh, and and that's a a big part of it as well. You also get some discounts on the store to help. I mean, if you think of it, if you're if you stick with the program long enough, you you continue taking care of your lawn long enough, the course basically pays for itself with just the discount by in in um um in of itself. Um, but yeah, it's a great program. This is as close as it I'll probably come to doing classes uh, because it, this scales. <laughs> Frankly, this this scales better, right? So it's it's easier for me to do this versus um, versus um, getting classes. Like from a time standpoint, that just wouldn't work. So just take all the knowledge, put it into the into one place, and then you can get access to it. And the thing is, once you buy it, you own it for life. You buy it one time, and then as I add more content, there's, you don't have to pay any more for it. Like it's as long as the internet is still around, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have uh, access to that. So. In case you're interested, Jermaine, I will link it here in the chat for you. So there you go, uh, Golf Course Lawn Academy. And as far as the meet and greet goes, um, you know, it, the 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 Real Rollers Turf Park uh, meet and greet was awesome last year. It was really, really good. So if, if Lee wants to do another one, I will absolutely show up. It was a great time. It was a great meeting all you guys. So if he's down to do, do another one, um, I will definitely be there. So that's... Uh, you know, given that we're the proximity of where it is and the turf park is a great venue. Like if you guys haven't been by real rollers to check it out, you guys should. I mean, they've got like three different plot, uh, grass plots there. You got two Zoysia plots, a, um, a Bermuda plot, and, you know, Lee's a wealth of knowledge on real mowers and on parts. Anything you need to know as far as getting a great result with real mowers, definitely check out real rollers. So, so yes, I, I'm hoping for this year that it'll happen, but I got to check with Lee and see what his thoughts are and what the scheduling would look like uh, on that. So great question, Jermaine. Golf Course Lawn Academy, if you're looking for classes or for training, and then meet and greet uh, to be determined, to be determined. All right, so from Harvard Fashion here on Instagram, we says, is the new all natural fertilizer from Miramichi Green just like Milo, a human biosimilant? No, so that's a great question. So what's in it? Well, I'll actually show you that. We can go over there real quick. We can cut over here. Is if you go to shop and then the lawn fertilizer, you're gonna see the new organic fertilizer from Miramichi Green. And guys, this is truly an organic product. It's OMRI certified, so it's not like, you know, some products they'll say they're organic, but this is truly organic. Um, so what's in this? Uh, the, the um, a lot of the, um, the nitrogen, the food source comes from from chickens, from 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 um, from that, from that by, as a byproduct. Um, so it's not like Milo. It is from chickens. Um, so it has a bit of odor along the lines of what Essential G has. Not bad, but there's there's a bit of. Do you say what they say? It smells like success. A little bit of that going on with it. Um, but as far as what the differences are, um, you can think of if you took. Essential G, if you took the Essential G as far as like the humate, as, uh, as far as a lot of the, the, the ingredients that are in Essential G and added fertilizer to that and it made it you know completely organic, that is what uh, this, uh, this largely is. In addition, you also get some iron in this, which is not an Essential G. Um, so if you're, if you're looking for a product that is a truly organic fertilizer product that you can use on your lawn, you can use your vegetable garden, wherever you want to use it, uh, this, this is great. Again, it's, it's truly an organic uh, OMRI listed um, listed product. It's not like um, it is not like um, like like Milo. It, it also has um, a bacteria added to it. There's also some mycorrhiza, some bacteria added in here. Let me see if I can show you. So if I go in on the label, and if you look here, there's it talks about the five percent humate, but also all the types of different types of bacteria. You got my, uh, mycorrhizal fungi in there, and um, you know different different types of other bacteria, healthy bacteria to help improve. Uh, your 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 soil and nutrient uptake, right? So it's it's a great product. Again, the best way to describe it is to take essential G, take some of the some of the really cool parts of essential G. Sands the biochar. You don't get biochar in it, um, but you also add like a microbial package, humate, some iron, and want in a purely organic product. And that and there you have the organic fertilizer. So if you're looking for something that is that is again um, purely organic, then it's a um, it's a great 
it's a great option. So Granger, yeah, we've got that in stock on the store. I would send you a link here. I don't think it's gonna be clickable on Instagram, but I'll paste it in here for you anyway, just because, um, just because, because you asked, and it's a great question. If I learn how to copy and paste, copy and paste is, is hard, man. All right, so there you go. It's, it's there's in the chat on uh, on Instagram. So um, but yeah, go to the golf course lawn store. It's under the lawn fertilizer section. So go to shop lawn fertilizer, and it's uh, it's right there. It's in stock now, and it and Essential G are, are are ready to go. So if you place an order now, it will go out next business day. More than likely Monday is what I would imagine. So great, great question, sir. All right, and get the people from the gram hanging out too. That's cool. We got you know some participation from the gram and participation from uh, from YouTube, which is always good. All right, next up is Mr. Papa Moslo. He says, "Hey, Ron and everyone." Wow, my grass is a quarter green already. See, I'm jealous. I'm, I'm a little bit jealous, Papa Molos. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you, but if, if you if you sense a little bit of jealousy, it's, it's there, because I'm not quite, you're a little bit ahead of me. Your quarter green, all I've done is run the turf a few times a week for the last three weeks. Expect 80 degrees next week. Yeah, man, so that's so that's awesome, uh, Papa Moslo. You're greening up. Um, we This past week has been warm. Tonight, it's supposed to get really cold, but then after that, it's gonna be on a warming trend. So I was looking at the weather forecast here before the show, and I'll show you guys real quick. If you look at what it is for like Gainesville, Georgia, so it's 29 tonight, which is obviously the opposite of warming up. But then after that, you've got 58, 62, 69, 68, it's 80 degrees on Thursday. That's awesome. You know, so the, the, the temps going forward are in the 60s, 70s, 50s, you know what I mean? I mean, there's some lows in the 40s, um, for the most part, but I mean, we are we are definitely on a warming trend. So I say all that to say, yes, we are closer to being out there mowing and having fun on our lawns than we are away from it. And also, if you have been waiting on getting your pre-emergent down and you're in the Southeast United States, you need to get your pre-emergent. You need to get that done because, you know, you can you can look at the, the forecast, the, the warming trend, and you don't want to be in your, you'd be out there fighting, fighting weeds all spring and summertime. So, uh, so if you're looking to get your, your weeds done, or your your or avoid weeds in your lawn. Get your pre-emergent out. Like it should have been done a couple of weeks ago, to be completely honest. But I mean, if you're wait if you're waiting for a time to say we're at the window where you need to either do it now's now's the window where you need to do it. Especially if you are in uh, in the southeast. Get that get that pre-emergent down uh, to prevent weeds in your lawn. We carry uh, pre-emergent again at the golf course lawn store. There's a, there's a comment pinned. Um, at the top of the chat if you're on YouTube. And if you go there, just go over to uh, the weed control section, herbicide section, and you'll see um, you'll see Prodiamine or Dithiapyr listed there. So good stuff. All right, next up is Jason Sitter. He says, hey, Ron, how long does it take for certainty to work? I know the bottle says two to three weeks. Um, I may need to spray a second time. It's been around two weeks for me now, and I'm not seeing any change. Okay. So here's the thing, Jason, is a um, couple of things that could be going on. Yes, it does take a couple of weeks to work, especially now with the temps, um, or you did it two or three weeks ago when the temps were cooler. Um, herbicides do take a bit longer when temps, when temperatures are cooler. Uh, the thing I would also say too, as far as application rate, now the video that I did on, on, on Celsius and Certainty, I mean, two years at this point, a couple years ago, um, remember the, the rates that I gave on that with the, with the three, so I got it here. I actually break. I'll actually break up the scoop. I'll actually show you what I'm talking about. Um, the, the the rate I was I showed you guys as far as three small scoops. That rate, like here, let me show you. So we have we have a this is the spoon that it comes with. You have a a small scoop and a large scoop. All right. So if you're dealing with sedges, right? So nut sedge, um, kalinga, like the 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 small scoop, three of the small scoop, um, along with two gallons of water. Uh, works very well. You get a really good result with that for sedges. Um, when it comes to POA, you need to kick the rate up a bit. So for POA, uh, one of the large scoops, one large scoop, so if you guys are here on Instagram, you can see this large as well too. You got small, you got small, large. You're gonna wanna go with one of the larger scoops um, with two gallons of water. That's good for spot spraying for POA. So, you know, one one large scoop of certainty with two gallons of water, mix some surfactant in there, and that's gonna that's gonna get you a better result when you're targeting POA. That's actually the the low end of the rate that they recommend for POA. You can go actually a little bit heavier than that, but start with that. And I think you're gonna find you're gonna get a good result, Jason, especially now that we are the temperatures are warming up. You know what I mean? So with the, with the, with the warmer temperatures, the herbicide is going to work a bit better, um, and and that is what I would I would say. So you know, if it's been two weeks, give it. You know, if it's not if it's not changing yet, you want to do another application uh, by all means. But again, um, 
you surfactant with it, one large scoop, two gallons of water, and you should get a better result uh, with that when you're, uh, when you're spot spraying. So don't forget, don't neglect the surfactant. So what I'm talking about here, and actually I should just show you real quick. So here on the store, if you go over to shop and the weed killer, so certainty is here. This is one part of it, but for best results, you also want to mix some surfactant, some spreader sticker in there. So these two, this, these two together, and this, for this, you know, an ounce or two of that in a, in a couple of gallons of water, um, along with, uh, again, one large scoop, two gallons of water, and that's that's good for your spot spraying mix for uh, for Poanua. If you want to be able to see, see where you sprayed, add some marker dye as well, but that this part is the one I'd say is optional. Still a good idea, but this is the optional of the two. These two are really not optional if you're really looking to get the best result when uh, when targeting POA. So hope that helps, sir. Sorry you're dealing with POA. And uh, as another viewer said earlier, next fall, we gotta get you on that spectacle life, man. Get, get some spectacle flow, and uh, then POA will not really be an issue in your lawn. It's a great, it's a great product. All right, he says, I pulled out the reel last week and I did this pre-scalp, starting the green up in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are getting some warmer weather. Awesome, good stuff, good stuff. I'd like to hear it. I think we have another super chat. So let me get down here and get that really quick. I don't want to get too far behind because I know how you guys are. And we have, I got Luis in the house. Luis Ayarbareño in the house. He is dropping a super chat. Super chat received. He says, I have prodiamine, essential G, uh, humic max, com complete, and the triple four on the way. I am ready to go. One problem, eight inches of snow on the ground. Yes, that is a, that's an issue. And Luis, um, I got to show you guys. You guys remember, Luis is the reason that uh, that we have the beanies now, the golf course lawn beanies in the uh, in the store. So uh, so I'll show you guys. Luis sent me a picture here. Uh, I'll show you here. And when he's talking about that there's snow, he he's not kidding. He's not kidding. Uh, Luis, I think you have you have twenty dollars. So you are now the show sponsor. Thank you so much for that, sir. I appreciate it. Your name in life, whatever it means to you. But this is this is Luis out doing. Uh, snow work. So we see him rocking the beanie and it, it I mean, it looks like it's snowing hard. I'm not sure who took that, but bless his or her heart. You probably had your poor wife out there taking a picture while you're out there running. looks like a snow blower or snow, so a snow machine and it's actively snowing. I mean, look at that. You can see all the, all the snowflakes within this picture and he's representing for the, uh, for the channel. So thank you so much for the super chat, sir. Appreciate all the, uh, all the support. The beanie looks great and hopefully I'm wishing warm weather your way so you can uh, you can get out there and start using all those products that you're stock up, stocking up on so you're good to go uh, for, for this season. So again, thanks for the support and uh, you know definitely keep me posted if I can help with anything. Again, hopefully the snow goes away. So hopefully the snow goes away soon. That uh, that's, that's painful. All right, uh, next is Jason. He says, uh, when I bought the Certainty a couple of weeks ago, um, it came with a cool sticker. Thanks for the autograph on the background. I'll be buying the Primo Max and X. Yeah, so what he's talking about, you guys remember on the live stream, probably two live streams ago, I uh, I was showing you guys the, the these limited um, golf course lawn store uh, stickers, the holographic stickers. I only have a few of these. I only had a, uh, not, not a ton of them made up, at least in comparison to the other stickers that I have. So what I did during that week is, um, if for anyone that bought like Primo Max or a um, Primo Max or a Certainty or Celsius or s some of the things that we ship locally here, I made sure that one of these went in the packaging. So if you guys want one, I mean, if you like stickers, if you don't like stickers, then no, no big deal. You can order whatever you want. But if you want to have a chance to get one of these, um, I'll do it again this weekend if you want. So the, uh, any orders that come in of um, again the um, of Primo, let me see here, of Primo, a Celeprin. Uh, the certainty, Celsius, tenacity, any of that stuff that we ship here locally, I will make sure that you also get a sticker on um, one of these stickers, which you can't really buy, can't really, can't easily get these um, in your order if you care about that. So something something cool. And yeah, man, uh, Primo is uh, is awesome. You're gonna enjoy it. I'll tell you, like I, like I told the other viewer, there's, the only problem with Primo is there's life before it and there's life after it. Once you get on that Primo train, you're not gonna want to stop because it is it's uh it's awesome, man. It's really really good good stuff. He says, yep, I have mostly Poa on one side of my house that barely sees sunlight and when it rains, the last to dry. Yep, so that's that's it, man. So, so going up, go try that 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 um that rate, that again, the one large scoop, that should really help you when it comes to taking care of the Poa. And the conditions you described is exactly where Poa um loves to thrive, right? Even if you do like like pre-emergent, right? I say you do like prodiamine over the um like last fall. The area where you'll start seeing some breakthrough with Poa are areas that get wet. Get, like get wet um, on on Alex's lawn. There's a part of his um, his vanity strip 
near the mailbox where water settles or pools there when it rains heavily. And that's where you got a, a small amount of breakthrough. And, and anywhere where there's gutters, like water that comes from downspouts, that's where you'll also get breakthrough. But again, if you have spectacle, like I, I mean, you guys saw my lawn. My lawn literally was, has been a lake several times over the course of this winter. And there's no POA in the lawn at all, at all, period, full stop. So if you don't want to deal with POA next year, uh, you know, get on, get on a spectacle flow. I think you'll really like the results that you get with it. It's a great product. All right, Clinton Brock is up. He says, Atlanta, Georgia has the best real mowers on Craigslist. Well, we are in the Southeast United States. We do like our real mower. We do like our shortcut turf. So uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that you're finding a good selection of, of real mowers on, uh, on, on Craigslist. You know, we also got real, real rollers. Think about it. Like, you know, the, the, the nationally known renowned real rollers is here in Georgia. Not like, you know, not even uh, 10, 10 miles from where I am. So, you know, it's... Uh, we are, we are serious about our shortcut turf here in the great state of Georgia. All right, Robert Brown is up next. He says, what's up, Ron? What's going on, Robert? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. And uh, we got, actually, speaking of real rollers, we got real rollers in the house. He says, hey, sorry, I miss you today, Ron. Yeah, no worries, man. He says, Here's the, you know, I got I got done with my, my meeting. I was going to come by at lunch and just hang out and chat for a little bit. And, uh, you know, you weren't there. It's okay. I mean, I, I, I felt a little bit of lack, you know, but uh, it, it happens. Next time I'll have to call first. You know, I got to call before I before I show up. Don't just, don't just come over there unannounced. Uh, but yeah, man, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely get together and I, I'm going to come out there again, like we were talking about to, uh, to do that thing in the, uh, in the turf park again. So, uh, so no worries there. We will definitely catch up. We will definitely catch up. All right. Next up is two Trilla. He says, happy Friday, Ron and everyone hope all is well. Happy Friday to Trilla. Hope you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. We got Doug 350 with a twin turbo Z. In the house, Rich V70 saying, "Thank God it's Friday." It is, man. Thank, yeah, it is. It is Friday. It says, uh, "I'm I'm happy that we are on a warming trend. That tonight should hopefully, I mean, fingers crossed. You know, I I don't want to jinx this, guys, but you know, the forecast. This is the last really cold night we should have for a while, and I think here over the next you know next couple of weeks." The green fuzz is gonna start showing up. I'm gonna be out there, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have like one little sprout, little sprouts of green grass showing up. I'm gonna be out there mowing. I'm gonna be out there cutting them off. You know, I'm not gonna, I, I can't wait to get back out there and, and start working on the lawn again. I really, I, uh, I, I do miss it. As much as I complain about working in the lawn when it's cold outside, I do miss mowing my lawn. So I'm ready for that to get started up. We got another super chat here uh, from Mr. DK randall mr dk randall thank you so much for the super chat sir super chat received. he says hey ron i received my results from my soil test i emailed the results earlier today please let me know what you think uh dk did you send those to me i may have to find them Let me see if i can find a randall in here um i don't have i don't have anything you may have to you have to let me know what uh what name you sent them you sent them under i have Oh, actually, I think I do have you here. I do have you here. Yep, I do have it. So yeah, you want to take a look at it real quick? So I think, let me pull this out. We can do this live. You gave me a super chat, right? So the least I can do is at least look at your soil test. We can review it live. We can we can absolutely do that. But now I've got to do some, I got to do some quick conversions here because you sent me a PDF and I can't, um, I don't want to put that on the live stream. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create one, create an image here really quick. All right, uh, DK and done. All right, so he sent me his soil test results, guys, and this is it right here. So you want to want to, you want to know why um, why soil testing is good? If you take a look at his from earlier today, and there we are now. All right, so if you look. For the most part, his soil is looking pretty good. I've already emailed him back. The only thing he's really needing is a bit of phosphorus, right? So, um, so DK, the story behind this soil, because um, I, I remember now, now that I look at your, I'm looking at your email, is he is someone that um, that has a that has a service. Let me stop sharing here really quick. That has a service um, that that takes care of his lawn for the most part, right? And then he supplements what they do with his own fertilization. So he has someone come out and they spray for weeds and everything else. And then he does his own fertilization in between to supplement that. So he wanted to see where he was, like how what they were doing, what effect that was having, and what he should be doing as far as fertilization if he decides to take it over completely as himself this year. So that's the story behind this soil test. And if you look at it, for the most part, he's in pretty good shape. You know, his phosphorus levels are low. So whatever they were using on his lawn last year, it looks like 
Um, he was getting plenty of N, plenty of K, you know, good adequate amount of, of N and K, of nitrogen and potassium, but not much phosphorus. Um, his magnesium is a little bit low and his other micronutrients are also a bit low. So what I would say is what, and you already know the answer to this DK, is the uh, the complete fertilizer, which has, again, has it's, it has some nitrogen, has potassium in it, but also has that phosphorus and the micronutrients that your soil is lacking. That is, is what I would go with. You could feed your lawn with that, you know, for the first few months of the season, bring those levels up, test again, and then and then see where you are. Overall though, the, you're in great shape. The thing that I always look at and you, uh, you, you pass, is um, the right side of the graph, your soil pH is looking solid, right? Like all this thing, all this stuff over here, this stuff is easier to fix. It's, it's the, it's your, your pH is the thing that you really wanna um, make sure that it's in great shape in your soil, um, if at all possible. So yeah, so I already sent you what I would recommend as far as the complete, the 14714, great option. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully that helps, sir. Appreciate the super chat. If you need anything else or have any other questions, feel free to drop me a line and I will do my best to help you out. All right, scrolling up here, Alexander Lee says, happy, happy Friday evening, lawn nerds. <laughs> Whatever, man, you're a lawn nerd too. You can't, you can't be talking trash. You're right in here with the rest of us. All right, so the next up is, uh, is Koi Guy. He says, happy Friday. What a crazy week weather-wise in Jonesboro. How's your weather? Today it's cold. Yesterday it was, it was nice and warm out, uh, Koi Guy. Um, but you know, it's just uh, it's one of those things. Just in Georgia, you don't like the weather? Just wait a little while. We're not, we're not quite as, our weather isn't quite as fickle as say Florida's weather, but it's, uh, you know, we don't really have a real winter here. It gets, it gets cold for a couple of days and then it gets warmed back, back up again. You don't have like, you know, stretches where it's really, really cold for extended periods of time like they do in the North. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's cold today, but it's gonna be warm starting tomorrow and then really, um, you know, for over the next 10 days, if the weather uh, guy or gal are to believe, be believed, right? All right, next up is No Name. He says, hey, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts. Happy Friday, looking forward to a great show. I appreciate you, uh, No Name. You are, you are a staple of the live stream. You're always here every week, always commenting on the videos, and I definitely do appreciate all the support. Thanks for making some time to come and hang out. And of course, he's leading the charge. Just get those likes up. Let's do it, man. If you guys have not given a like, I mean, we got uh, almost 150 people in here right now in the live stream. If you guys would not mind getting the likes up, it doesn't cost anything. Just, just move the mouse over, your trackpad over to the, to the, to the like button, just tap that ever so gently, costs you absolutely nothing. It's a free way to support the channel, sends good vibes to the algorithm, and I would really, really, really appreciate it if you did that. Thank you so much. Uh, so guys, tonight it's lemonade, and they also have a glass uh, or a cup, of, a cup of tea here as well, so I'll be going back and forth between them throughout the show. All right, next up is Jerry Ward. He says, happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, Jerry? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. And guys, something else for you guys to, to, to know is uh, lately I've been getting a lot of questions around fertilizer, right? Like what fertilizer should I be using this spring? Liquid options, granular options. Um, what role does fertilizer play in your lawn care program? How do I choose the right fertilizer? What do those numbers on the bag mean? So in the vein of only having to answer a question like one time or making it to where I've got it documented somewhere where you guys can read it, just ref use it for reference, uh, there was a blog post that was released today. Um, it was released uh, really, really early this morning um, on the topic of lawn fertilizer. So if you guys are interested in that, you can go here and check out uh, our our blog post on uh, choosing the right fertilizer for this spring. So I'll show you that really quick here. Uh, if you go back to the golf course lawn store and just go to the blog section, the very first one you'll see here is the best fertilizers to use this spring. And it talks about your lawn's coming out of dormancy, when you should start fertilizing, the optimal time, what those, those that this NPK thing you always hear about, what that stuff means, like what is it, what, you know, what, 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 why should I care about that? And the effects that it has on your lawn. A video that I did last year on um, different fertilization and, and nutrient feeding strategies for your lawn. And then, you know, granular liquid, um, again, other videos, and then talking about different fertilizers, when you'd want to use them, the benefits of them, of the different options, liquids and granular like they're all covered there. So it's a, it's a fun blog post, had a lot, had a lot of fun. Um, um, I'm working on this one, I'm putting it together. So, you know, if, if, you, if for nothing else, just so that, you know, just so my feelings aren't hurt, feel free, feel free to go over there, read it. If it's helpful, share it, you know, and, uh, and it'll also be for anyone watching the live stream after the fact, that blog post will also be in the show notes. It'll be in the description of this video. So you can also find that as well. So it's the best fertilizers to use this spring. Uh, that is, um, a lot of good info in there, in addition to just talking about the different fertilizers. Like even if outside of the, the different product mentions, there's a lot of good information in there around just fertilization in the springtime that I think you guys will find useful. And again, please share it with friends, family, anyone else that you think could benefit from it. All right, next up is Mr. Harper Explores. 
he says, dang, I want to go mow now. Hey, hey, here's the thing. Don't, you know, yeah, I get it. You, you want to go mow now, but just, just wait, just wait. I mean, soon you're not going to have any chance or choice but to mow. So enjoy this time. Enjoy like the ramp up to the craziness that is, you know, that is our, um, our, our, our growing season here. It's going to be here anytime soon. All right. Mary Jay's up next. She says, uh, starting to see spots of green in some areas and I can hardly wait. Will you talk about insect management a little bit? Uh, I had a lot of flies and no CMs last year. Can I do anything? Yes. Yes, you can. So great question, Mary. So as far as insect, um, management, there's a couple different, that comes in a couple different camps. All right. So you have like lawn damaging insects, like your grubs, um, um, army worms, which destroyed everyone, not this past year, but the year before that, army worms like ate up everyone, did a lot of damage throughout the entire country, a lot of lawns. Uh, you got annual bluegrass weevils, bill bugs, just in general, a lot of the, a lot of the um, like sod web worms, a lot of the turf caterpillar, caterpillars that will eat at, um, eat at the, the roots and, and effectively kill, kill your grass, right? Destroy your lawn. So for those, what I like to use is, I think I've got it here, is an uh, insecticide from Syngenta. It's called a celeprin. Uh, this comes in liquid and granular form. I got this over here for you guys. You can see as well. So I'll show, let me go, go over here actually to the store and I can show you what I'm talking about. So we can do all this live. So if you go to shop and then fungicide and insecticide, so a celeprin for your, um, for your grubs, um, any kind of turf caterpillar, sod web worms, army worms, this is what I would roll with. This, 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 this would be your jam. So you've got it in liquid form, the acelloprin SC, and you've also got acelloprin G, the granular, um, both equally effective. Which one you apply is really down to your preference, right? I, I am a fan of the liquids because it gives you easier control over application rate. You can, um, you know, and so if you're, if you're, if you have a backpack sprayer and you prefer liquids, then the acelloprin SC is what I would, um, I would say to go with, but the granular is an effective product as well. So for, for the insects that damage your lawn, this is what I would go with. The time when I typically spray this, if I'm, when I'm doing it as a preventative, it would be next month. So like late March, early April, that's when Syngenta says is a good time to apply it. Um, the Mar late March, early April timeframe. Um, I tend to go more that, that late March timeframe. If you've got a history of insect damage in your lawn, um, and you, especially if you're in an area where it's warmer, there's no harm in spraying it now, but as a preventative, um, April, so March, April timeframe is when I like to use um, a celebrant SC. So that's for your... Uh, lawn damaging insects. So now, if you're looking for something, I'm not sure if I have it here. I think I do. Do I? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So if you're looking for an option for, um, you mentioned here, no seums, flies, roaches. What you're gonna want is this: is the uh, the Miramichi um, non toxic pest control. This takes care of your. I'll tell you everything it reads off: mosquitoes, ants, no seums, roaches, ticks aphids, white flies, fleas, and chinch bugs. The nice thing about this is that it is non-toxic, meaning that you can spray it on your lawn, you can spray it on patio furniture, you can spray it on your patio. Like say you have people coming over, right, for an evening or whatever, and you don't, you're gonna be outside grilling out or eating out or whatever, you can take this, put it in your backpack sprayer, like literally spray, you know, spray the, 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 the outdoor area. Once it dries, you can re-enter the area. Not because of, of the, uh, because it's toxic or anything, but you just don't want to get the stuff. I mean, you don't want to smell like pledge. If you don't mind smelling like pledge, you don't have to wait. But I mean, as far as a product that is, um, that is non-toxic, been very well received. I mean, this is a really good product. I mean, Alex has a it's like a, I think it's like a weeping tree that he has there. And, um, he had an issue with white flies and literally I sprayed this. You actually can see in the product description. When you go to the product description for this, you'll see me, um, one of the picture, one of the, the, um, images is me spraying that tree that was, that was, um, being destroyed by the little, little white flies. Um, and this is, did a great job against that. So if you're looking for a non-toxic pest control option, again, that you can spray, all your outdoor areas, your shrubs, plants, you can place spray all that stuff with it with no issues. Uh, this, the, the Miramichi Green, the pest control product is, is an excellent option. For lawn damaging insects, I would say a celeprin, which I already put away. So hope that helps, uh, Mary, and where you can find that. So I already showed you where you can find um, a celeprin, and the Miramichi Green pest control is just under that right here. So uh, you can... You can go through here. Um, it comes in a couple different sizes. I can show you how you mix it. Again, it smells like lemon pledge. It's, it's like a, it's got a nice odor to it. Again, you can spray. You can use it with with a backpack sprayer, or you can use it with a fogger. Um, you can spray again outside of your home. This is the plant I was telling you guys about. This is the weeping willow. I'm, I'm not sure what the proper name for it is, but this is the, the weeping tree that that Alex had that was getting 
um, eaten up by white flies. So you can spray all those with it. And then reviews for people that have used it and have had great results with it. So uh, excellent product for someone, you know, that is looking for a non-toxic option that you can spray near the house to take care of the insects that you're talking about. So hope that helps. Great question. If I need anything else, uh, definitely let me know. And we got Benzito3 here on the gram saying that stuff is the best. I agree, it's a great product. I mean, the nice thing about it is that it works and it's non-toxic. And, and because of the way it works, um, insects can't form a resistance to them. You know what I mean? So if it kills them now, it's gonna kill them, you know, for the for the foreseeable future. So the bugs can't 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 not be killed by it is the um another benefit. So check it out. We have it in stock at the golf course lawn store um under the insecticide and fungicide uh, section. All right, next up is Harvard Fashion. He says, Yo, Ron, I'm in the building. What's going on, Granger? Thanks for coming to hang out, man. Yeah, so so you're you're double dipping. You're on you're on Instagram and you're over here on YouTube. I like it. I like it. I appreciate the support, man. And the next up is Robert Brown. He says, I'm waiting for the zoysia to green up. Won't be too long. Won't be too much longer. You know, I, I was over at um, the Real Rollers Turf Park during lunch looking at um, their area. And there, I'm starting to see some green up there as well. So the zoysia, both the zoysia and the Bermuda are starting, you're starting to see some green, starting to wake up. So over the next two weeks, you should really start seeing a change in the, the color of the lines. I mean, if you're in the Southeast, if you're, you know, if you're where Luis is, then sorry, not, you, got, you got a bit more waiting to do. But if you're in the Southeast United States, your lawn and your lawn, you have a grass -like type that goes dormant. You should start seeing a big difference in color. And is it beginning to wake up here in the next, uh, over the next couple of weeks, if the weather holds out, right? All right, next up is Dixie, uh, Dixie Hoodbilly. That's good. Not Hillbilly, Dixie Hoodbilly says, what up Ron and Lawn Fam? I got my first scalp here in today in Texas. It's already greeting up. What's a good blend for wake up? Great question, uh, Dixie Hoodbilly. So as far um, as what to use to wake up your lawn, um, I like to, to, to go with biostimulants, so like the, the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit is what I'm gonna be spraying on my lawn. Um, you're, the best answer from a fertilization standpoint is to get a soil test done, right? Because the soil test is gonna tell you what your nutrient deficiencies are, and then you can fertilize based on that. Having said that, a good option, I'll show you here what I would, um, what I would do. Um, so if we go to the golf course lawn store and you go to shop and then uh, lawn fertilizer, uh, a good product to start the season with and also to end the season with if you have warm season grass is this product, the Stress 12024. What you have in this is, is a bit of nitrogen, 12% um, nitrogen, uh, some, some of it is slow release, and then a lot of potassium. So 24% potassium, which is very good. It's, it's good for overall plant health. So as a way to wake up the lawn, get things going, um, this is what I would use. This is what I'm gonna be using on my lawn for the first application, first fertilizer application of the season. Um, uh, in addition to, uh, you know, again, my, my liquids, the carbon kit, and then I'll switch to Humic Max. And then to close out the season, I will go back to this. So like in September, October timeframe, this is what I will end the season with. If you have cool season grass, you know, you think about it like um, in, in the summer months, that's when like your rye, your fescue lawns, that's when they tend to struggle. That's, this is a good option for that as well too, right? Again, it's a little lower than the nitrogen um, um, that you're putting in and a lot of potassium to really help the, the, the grass get through that, that stressful period. So for cool season grass, summertime, and then for warm season grass now, and um, also in in the fall. So that's thing one, that's thing one. And then the other option, another uh, option is um, biostimulants. Like you really can't go wrong with these. What I'm gonna be using is the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit. So there's three different products within this. You have a micronized carbon product, 10% micronized carbon and other and other biostimulants um, and built into this. The nice thing about this is if you're, if you're, if you're using this um, to wake the lawn up and as well as when you're using it to spray fertilizer, so you're mixing fertilizer along with it, it helps enhance nutrient uptake. So anything you mix with this works better. And then you have a kelp product, which is a 24% kelp um, product, a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of, a little bit of phosphorus. And again, that 4% potassium, the, the highest macro in this product is the potassium. And then finally is Biospectrum, which is a soil microbial food. So you've got three different products. Uh, this, these, this, this kit, these three, along with that that uh, 12 0 24, that stress product, is what I'm going to be using on um, on my lawn to start the season off um, here next month. Once the lawn begins greening up and I get the green fuzz, that's what I'm going to be opening up uh, the the season with. Um, to know what you should be using to feed the lawn throughout the season, I would say get a soil test done. Like that's that's the best answer to know that you're using the correct, um, you know, you're using a product that is that is matched to what your soil needs. So hope that helps. Good job on getting your scalp done. And uh, yeah, let me know if you need anything else. I think I, got, I covered both your questions. And if you need anything else, definitely let me know.
and definitely let me know. All right. Uh, next up, we have Jermaine Patrick. He says, uh, hey, Ron. What's going on, uh, Jermaine? And then next up, we have Calvin 40 Cal <laughs> Artist. Okay, I can tell what your, what your hobbies are outside of, um, outside of lawn care. He says, I got 51,000 square feet, so a bit over, just over an acre. I just put my pre-emergent down. What uh, do I do next? Well, <laughs> with 51,000 square feet, the, the, the answer still, the same answer still applies. Calvin, once your lawn begins greening up, uh, and that's, that's a lot, that's lots to take care of. Once it begins greening up, that's when you're going to want to start introducing your biostimulants, um, like your liquid biostimulants, I should say. If you want to do your granular, like Essential G, you can do that now if you want. But your liquids, uh, I'd say next month when you're starting to see the, um, some green coming out, that's when you can start using um, the same thing I was just showing um, Dixie uh, Hood Billy. So this, you can absolutely spray on your lawn. Now, what I would say for you is, given that you have 51,000 square feet, I would not necessarily get, I and mean, if you want to get just one just to try it out, that'd be fine. Um, but a, a, but given the size of your lawn, you're going to want to get the individual um, products. So like this, like Biospectrum in this size treats uh, four to five acres, which for your lawn, that's, you know, that, that's going to, that's going to do you well. And then really zero, you can buy this in gallon sizes or two and a half gallon sizes. Same thing for the kelp also in gallon and two and a half gallon sizes. So you're gonna to wanna to lean more towards this, like these three versus the carbon kit because the, the carbon kit is really designed for lawns 5,000 to 10,000 square feet. That's how the, the portions are set up. Given that you're dealing with over an acre, you're gonna to wanna to use the same products, but just simply moved more towards uh, towards these guys, the actual, the, the larger ones. And then as far as biostimulants, you have Essential G. This is a granular biostimulant. This you can use any time of year as long as the ground isn't frozen. Um, given that you have an acre, again, you can buy you can buy individual bags or you can go with the Super Sac, um, which is the equivalent of 50 bags. So we have it for carbonized PN and also for essential G's. So if you got, you know, if you want to load up and again, give the size of your property, it might, might, it might be more economical to do this versus buying um, individual bags. So I think that pretty much covers it. So um, your, your, your biostimulants um, and then whatever fertilizer your soil, your, your lawn needs based on your soil test results. Again, a good one to start out with is that that uh, 12024, that stress product that I was telling that I was um, um, telling the previous viewer about. So if you go here, I'll go back this real quick, show you real quick. This product is um, is a good option. Given the size of your lawn, you're going to need four or five bags. You know, five bags. So you have 51,000 square feet. I mean, you, have, you have a big property, so it's, it's going to everything for you is going to be <laughs> it's going to be larger portions. But that's what you, you get when you have you know well over an acre that you're that you're dealing with. So biosimilants and then fertilizer and then of course you know the the most important thing is once the lawn greens up is to mow it. Got to keep up with your mowing. That's the thing that's going to really uh, set your lawn apart from the other lawns uh, in your in your area in the in the neighborhood. So hope that helps, sir. And if you need anything else, definitely let me know. You did a good job getting your biosimilants down because uh, your uh, your pre-emergent down because the thing you have to realize too is with over an acre, you don't want to have to be spraying post-emergent herbicides on that. I mean, that's that's also going to be quite expensive and just frankly a, a huge hassle, right? So getting your pre-emergent down early was a um, a very smart move. Good job. All right, next up, we had a super chat here. Let me get down here and grab these really quick. We got one from DK. Actually, I already did this one already. We have another one from Doug 350Z Twin Turbo. Super chat for CFT. He says, hi, Ron. How long does the carbon kit last for? Let's say the 10,000 square foot kit. I guess I should ask how many applications per kit. Excellent question. So the kits are designed for three months. So if we go back here, that's, a, that's a, actually a really good question. And probably something I should add to the description because if you ask that question, other people probably have it. So um, yeah, so it's designed for um, for three enough for three months or three applications is what it's designed for. It does just say it right there. So three months of feeding. So if you have the ten thousand square foot kit, um, you figure a lawn that's less than ten thousand square feet, you get three feedings out of it. If you have a five thousand square foot uh, five thousand kit, then you get um, three feedings of a five thousand square foot lawn. What some people do is they will go out and they'll get let's say you have a five thousand square foot lawn and you want to stock up for the entire season. Um, they just go out and they'll get a ten thousand kit and just get double the amount of product. And then they are, they're good for, for the season. You know what I mean? So you get enough biospectrum, enough release zero, enough NutriKelp to, uh, to cover you for the season. But, but in all of these cases, they're designed for three applications. So three months worth 
of um, of coverage. So you can see the differences with the 5000 kit. You get one Nutri Kelp, one really zero, one Biospectrum. 10,000, you know, it's all it's double. You get twice the amount. In addition, there's also a 901C version. So if you are looking to to get a um, do your biostimulants and also have a fertilizer along with it, you can also opt for the 901C version of the kit, which is basically release zero with fertilizer. So if anyone people have asked me, you know, what's what's the difference between release zero 901 and and release 901C? The difference is release 901C is release zero. They're the exact same product. 901C has 9% nitrogen and 1% uh, potassium in it. So you got a little bit of fertilizer in it for those of you that want like more of an all-in-one type uh, type product. So hope that helps, Doug 350Z. Great question. Three months is what you get and uh, hope that helps. Good, good question. Appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat too as well. Appreciate appreciate all the uh, all the support. All right. We've got a lot of people in the live stream tonight, so I got to answer my questions faster. I got to go faster tonight because I don't want to have you guys waiting. I know how you guys can be. Can be, a bit, can be a bit of an impatient, an impatient bunch. All right. Next is Travis Winston. He says, "A hey, happy Friday to Yaron and the Golf Course Lawn Squad." Thanks, Travis. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. And then um, at Doug Three Fifty Z, he's uh, chiming in. He says the th the Miramichi Green uh, Pest Control. Yep. So that's that's exactly right, Doug. For again, nauseums, mosquitoes, uh, you know, uh, chinch bugs, like those those types of guys, like the the stuff, those types of uh, um, insects the pest control and for lawn damaging insects, uh, you know, like your sod webworms, grubs, I go with a celebrant. That is what I would recommend. That's what I use on my lawn. Next up is two Trilla. It's two Trilla. He says, um, I'm taking over my mother-in-law's lawn this year. She has Bermuda, but it is mostly a salad bowl. I'm planning to use certainty along with preem this Sunday. Can I mix image into that in with it as well? Uh, yes, yes. So, yeah, so if you're trying to take care of POA, then yes, mixing some image in with that. So here's what I would say to Trilla. Um, image is a post-emergent herbicide and really it's, it's a foliar product. It's designed to stick to the plant's leaf to work. So if you're applying it with pre-emergent, you can do that. You can do that and it can work. But what I would say is, um, uh, don't like, don't water the pre-emergent and don't water your mom's lawn, your mother-in-law's lawn, um, right after application. So you're going to want to, um, apply the um the pre this blend your pre-emergent and um and certainty blend and along with and along with um you said you can use some image as well you know you're gonna apply that and let it sit for a day or so so if you applied it tomorrow morning don't run any irrigation until sunday so let it let it dry on the leaf because that's going to get you a better result with your um with the, the post-emergent with um with certainty now the one thing i would say though is remember certainty is great for poa it's great for some some of your some grassy weeds but if she's dealing with broad leaves um in her lawn because you said a salad bowl and I'm, when i think salad bowl i think of like not only poa i think of like broad leaves as well you might want to consider also adding some celsius in there as well again that that combination so using celsius certainty along with pre-emergent i did that very combination last year on my next door neighbor's lawn and it did an awesome job for him in the spring um, to, to clean things up. Like his, his lawn was a salad bowl and it, again, one application did a great job. So I, you, you're looking pretty good there. Adding some imagery as well, not going to hurt anything. What I would say is that um, if you're dealing with broad leaves, consider some Celsius uh, as well. I, I would, I would definitely, I would definitely opt for adding that to your, uh, to your blend there. And then you should be good to go. That you sh should get a pretty good result uh, with that. And it's good. That's good on you, man. You're a good son-in-law. You're a good son-in-law. Helping your mom, your mother-in-law out, taking care of her lawn, getting her salad bowl under control. The, 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 the thing is, is that once you, once you do this, now you know you're going to own it. It's, it's going to be two Trilla lawn care going forward. You know, cause you know, no, no good job, no good deed goes unpunished. And then you said, um, I, uh, I'm going to mix image with it. I'm not sure what certainly will cover and what it will not. Yeah. So what I would say is this, if you want my recommendation is if we go to the weed killer section on the store is if you're going to, if it's a salad bowl, like what you're describing, if it looks, if it looks, uh, if it looks anything like, like that, if that's what it looks like, then you're not going to only want to use uh, certainty. You're going to want to use Celsius. You're going to want to use a broad leaf product as well with it. So what I would say is, um, if you don't have already the, the the Celsius Certainty Kit, this is a way to save yourself some money. You get Celsius Certainty, Marker Dye, and Surfactant. You get all four of these products all in a box, all in one. It comes delivered to you. Um, you know, it's all, all packaged up. And um, and that's a way for you to, again, to save a little bit of money. Um, and, and 
I would add a broadleaf product along with uh, certainty if you're going to be, you know, if what you're describing looks anything again like uh, like that, like that. Uh, certainty alone is not going to do that. It's going to do a great job on the poa, but for the dandelions, broadleaf, all this, all this other trash you see in here, you're going to want to use um, you're going to want to use um, Celsius for that. It's going to be a good option. Um, to help to help clean that up. The only one, one thing you'll find too here, Tuchilla, is in the description, there is a video that shows how I mix it, how I blend these two. The only difference that I would make to the rates that you see in that video is um, I show that during the summertime. And in the summer, I show using uh, three of the small scoops of certainty with two gallons of water and um, and and Celsius. If you're gonna be going after POA this time of year, which it sounds like that's probably gonna be one of the weeds in your mother-in-law's lawn, I would use one uh, large scoop per two gallons of water. That is what I, that's the only difference I would make other than what you see in that video, uh, given the time of year and given the weeds um, that you're likely gonna be trying to take care of in your mother-in-law's lawn. Again, I'm assuming you're gonna have some POA in there as well. So hope that helps. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good option. Your plan sounds solid to me. Just make sure you add um, a broadleaf. And for me, the one that I would recommend is um, is Celsius because it's not only good now, it's also great during the summertime. When temp temps get hot, Celsius and Certainty are two herbicides you can spray as it gets hotter with less chance of injury to your grass compared to other, other options. All right, next up we got Real Rollers. He says, Calvin, that's a lot of turf. It is, I know, right? 51,000 square feet. You'd be on You'd be on, on triplex life with that. That'd be a, that's a lot of mower. That's a lot of mower you need to be able to take care of that. Sounds like a fun project though. Sounds like a, a fun project. Next up we got Robert Brown. He says he's got Compadre Zoysia. Nice, very nice. I'm um, actually, um, I've got, I've got a little bit of that on my back porch on my little my little planter like if you guys watch the videos right now is a dormant but if you see that little that little plot of grass is sitting on the on the you know during the videos like a little prop like that is zoysia it's come it's compadre so so yeah cool it's a great looking grass it's a little the blade's a little bit thicker but it's a uh, it's a nice looking nice looking zoysia all right dixie uh hill hood billy i keep saying hill billy hood billy says my backyard of bermuda is starting to green up um, and I scalp today my front lawn, my front yard is St. Augustine. How low should I scalp St. Augustine? So I'm not, here's the thing. I don't have St. Augustine. I'm Dixie Hood Billy. And I don't know that most people really do scalp St. Augustine. Like I, I look, I look at a lot of Alan's content, like lawn care nuts content. And I don't ever see him ever scalping his lawn. Now, granted, he lives in Florida and it doesn't really, well, that's not, actually, that's not true. He did, he did do some, he, he did his zoysia here recently, but I don't, I don't know if he did his, his St. Augustine, like the scalping video that he recently did. I think it was for the Zoysia. I don't think it was for the St. Augustine. Um, for Bermuda, you can, you can absolutely scalp it, but for St. Aug, cause I don't have it. I don't know how common it is for people to, uh, to, uh, to scalp that. If you do, you're not, you're not going to hurt it. I wouldn't go to the, to the heights of cut that you do with Bermuda. So St. Augustine likes to grow, you know, three, four inches, like in that, that, that height or, or taller, you know, if you take it down to two and a half inches, two inches, two and a half inches, that, that, that's, that's likely a safe height to bring it down without putting too much stress into the, into the grass. Um, but, uh, but yeah, your Bermuda's good. And then St. Augustine, check out, check out Alan's content, check out the, the long care net again. He's, I know he did a video here recently on scalping and I believe it was his zoysia that he, that he primarily did. I don't think he did a St. Augustine lawn. So, but at any rate, if you do scalp it, do not take it down to the same as low as you did the Bermuda. St. Augustine likes to grow taller, so don't, you know, you don't want to scalp it as aggressively as you do as you do Bermuda. And like Bermuda, I'm a fan of when you're scalping your lawn to take the debris out. Like I don't see the point of going out there and cutting, you know, a bunch like like violating the one-third rule in a major way as a way to start the season off, and you're just blowing all that trash back into the lawn, right? You're just in many ways you're working against yourself. So if you're going to scalp it, Make sure you have like a grass catcher on it or you're a bagger or whatever you happen to have, what kind of mower you have and get the, the stuff you're taking out of the lawn. That's when you're going to see a lot of the benefits of, uh, of scalping. Great question. Sounds like you're, you're on your way. You're serious. You're like, you know what? I, I am my, my yard on my street is going to be the one that all the neighbors are going to be being like, man, how'd she get her lawn looking like that? I like where you're going. So you're getting ahead of the game. It's good stuff. All right, next up is Neil White. He says, hey, Ron, I'm going to plug an area of my lawn, killing off the fescue. Should I skip pre-emergent in that area? I'm plugging with Tiff Tough Bermuda. Thanks. Um, you can. I mean, it's it's as long as you're not you're not going ridiculous with the with the rates. I mean, you're not. Here's the thing: you're not growing it from seed. So when you're pulling the plugs out, you're taking the you're taking the Bermuda out, and you're taking, you know, actually some root zone along with it. So Bermuda should not have problems. 
um, establishing even with pre-emergent there if it's um, if if you're plugging it. You know what I mean? Because it's not the idea behind plugging or behind pre-emergent is that as a plant, um, a weed or grass seed starts to try and grow roots, it kills or kills off those those roots, causing the plant to die. When you're plugging the lawn, you're already going to have roots. So if you don't want to do pre-emergent in that area, that's fine. But if you if you did, I think you'd be just you'd be okay too. I think it would establish. Uh, just fine. Again, as long as you're plugging it and not not um not trying to do anything as far as seed goes. Great question. All right, next up is Colt Pill Pow. And I guess before I move to the next question, um, Neil, if you decide not to do that, if you decide not to do pre-emergent in the area that you're going to plug, just know that you're going to have you'll you may have to use some post-emergent herbicides in that area. You may have some crabgrass and some spurge that may come in there. You might not, but if you have any weeds, you can do, you can always just use you know, a post-emergent herbicide like Celsius, like Certainty, Quinclorac, depending on what you're dealing with, to, to clean that up. So it's not it's not like you're committing some cardinal sin by not doing pre-emergent in that area if you decide not to do that. There's ways to take care of the weeds after the fact. And once the, the tiff tuff establishes and it grows in, it's nice and thick, that's going to be, and especially, especially if you're mowing it at, you know, below two inches, the lower the better, um, that, that in of itself is going to do a really good job of crowding out and making it difficult for weeds to take root in the lawn. So... Just something else to think about as well. All right, Colt Pill Pal is up next. He says, hey, Ron and Carew, I want to bring up the turf to be level with my neighbor's driveway. It is two and a half inches. Do I top dress it bit by bit or cut the sod and level from the bottom? It's 15 feet long by five feet wide. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what I, you know, two and a half inches, that's a lot, that's a lot of top dressing, man. Um, if you're fine with it, it's going to look a little bit ugly. If you're fine with, um, with cutting the like cutting the sod and and like like cutting the sod and move, and lifting that back, um, and then building it up and then putting the sod back down, that is given that you're talking about 15 feet. Five, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of top dressing. That is that is probably what I would do. That is what I would do. I, I would not because I mean to build up to two and a half inches of top dressing is a while. That's like. That's more than a season. That's like a season. That's like a season's type goal. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you decide you're going to do top, if you're going to go up, raise an area by two and a half inches, it, it might take you several rounds of top dressing this year to pull that off. Or again, you can, you can cut the sod, fold it back, you know, build it up and then put it back down. Um, that's going to get you a faster result and, and get you what you're after uh, than, than trying to build it up slowly over time with top dressing. So, and here's the thing, you're likely going to have to top dress it again anyway afterwards because as good as a job you think you may have, you're going to be doing as far as building up that five foot section and evening it out, where it transitions from the five foot area. So if you, so if you have like, if you have driveway, five foot um, width wide area, and then the rest of the lawn, like that transition area, like you're unlikely to get that perfect so you're likely gonna have to do some spot top dressing in there as well too once the um you know once things on things uh, warm up and you know the grass is actively growing so uh so yeah that that is what i would do if, if you're trying to get that get fixed as quickly as possible then cut it fold it back build it up and then and then set it back down if you do the top dressing route uh it's just going to be a longer process that can work too but it's just gonna take a lot longer to uh to get up to the height of the driveway so hope that helps sir great question all right, next up, let's see if we have any super chats here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. I did not. Great. Doing good, Ron. Keep it up. All right, next up is Richard Taylor. He says, I want to start my yard over from scratch in southern middle Tennessee. Where do I start and what kind of Bermuda grass would be best for my area? So, okay, so if you can start over from scratch, the, you're talking about a, a full renovation. Um, so you can kill, I don't know what kind of grass you currently have, but if you want to kill off your existing lawn, Richard, uh, you want to use a, um, what I would use, I would use a, is, is a, a two-pronged approach. If it were Bermuda, if you were Bermuda, so you had a Bermuda lawn, you're saying, hey, I want to get rid of my Bermuda lawn because I want to do a different kind of Bermuda or I want to do something else. What I would use is a combination of glyphosate, 41% glyphosate and Fusilade 2. That combination is very effective at killing Bermuda in like one go. Like glyphosate by itself won't do it and Fusilade 2 by itself won't do it. But those two mixed together, uh, does an excellent job um, killing Bermuda grass. So let's say you have a Bermuda lawn. That is what I would use to, to to kill it off. Now, as far as what kind of grass would be best for your area, there's tons of there's tons of different types of Bermuda. Uh, Tahoma 31 should do well in Middle Tennessee. I know the lawn tools have it in Arkansas, so they're probably a little bit 
cooler climate than you are, but I mean, you guys are you guys are, are fairly close, and it and it does a a great job. Um, it's, it's a great looking grass. It's a, it's a newer it's a newer um, cultivar. You have to get it um, in sod. Um, you have to get it from in sod form, but uh, that that is what I would go, would go with. If I were starting over today, like if you look at the lawn, the grass that was on the um, the field of the Super Bowl. Now, granted, I know it did not do a good job of the Super Bowl. Like it got torn up. You know, I'm not sure if they did a bad job like laying it or what they did, but it did. It was not a good look for Bermuda in, during the Super Bowl. The, the field got got absolutely destroyed. But if you if you want to see what it looks like, go back and watch the Super Bowl, and you can see like that grass is Tahoma 31. So if you like that color. And it's kind of hard to see the texture, but if you like how that looks, that is um, that is what you could go with as a replacement for whatever you have in your lawn now. If I were starting over today, um, I would either do to I'd either do a zoysia or, or I would do a Tahoma 31. More than likely, it'd be a Tahoma 31. So hope that helps. I don't know what kind of grass you're dealing with, so I can't give you another recommendation um, as far as the herbicide. But as far if you have Bermuda, Fusilate 2 and glyphosate, 41% glyphosate. Uh, will uh, take care of that. So what I'll, what I'll actually do is I will um, uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you some links here for the products that I'm talking about. So the one that I used last year is one called Eraser. I think it's a 41% glyphosate product, but it's not. It doesn't have to be this one. You can anything that has 41% glyphosate, which is there's tons of them, um, will work. So this is thing one. This is the first part of it. So let me see here at Richard. At Richard Taylor. So um, nope, that's Richard B. Richard Taylor at at Richard. Um, yeah. So this is the eraser product, um, and then Fusilade is Fusilade two is this. So those two um, is what I would um, is what I would go with. Let me get you the link to Fusilade two here really quick. And as far as rates, check the label. Um, if memory serves me, it was it was like half an ounce of Fusilade and either an ounce and a half or two ounces of the eraser. But check, again, obviously check the label um, and make sure that you're uh, you're applying the product at the at the right at the correct rates. I, I with the Fusilade, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was like half an ounce. I believe it was half an ounce is what I went with of that. So those two, if you're dealing with Bermuda, that combination will do a great job getting rid of it. And then Tahoma 31, if it were me, but you know, you can look at other Bermuda types and there's, there's Yukon, there's tons of different um, type types that will do well in that area. Um, but Tahoma 31 has a lot of advantages and with it being a newer cultivar, that's, that's probably what I would go with if it were me. Great question. Sounds like a fun project. All right, next up is your nightmare. He says, hi, Ron, I need to aerate my lawn. I've never done it before. Do I do that before overseeding or after? Um, how long after our, I air? How long can I aerate after pre-immersion? When can I water after I aerate? Thanks so much. Okay, so there's a lot, lot going on there. Okay, so a couple of things. If you're going to seed your lawn, I'm not sure what you're, what you're trying to do as far as your seeding project, but let's say I guess maybe you have a cool season lawn. But if you are going to seed your lawn, you should not apply pre-immersion. Apply pre-immersion and seed. Um, or like you're working against yourself because the pre-emergence gonna, is going to negatively impact the results you get from your seeding project. So that's thing one. If you're going to if you're going to use pre-emergent, or sorry, if you're going to seed the lawn, if you're doing any kind of renovation, do not use pre-emergent because you're just you're not going to get a good result with the um, with germination. As far as aeration goes, um, do I do it before or after? If, if it were me, so let's say let's say if I were going to do a lawn renovation project, um, say so you, you kill off the existing lawn, I would aerate. And then I would do the seed. So I would do the I would do the aeration first, and then I would do the um, I would put the seed down. So that that is the order that I would do them. And then as far as can you water after aerating? Yes, you can water after you're aerating. So if we, if we were talking about let's say you are you're Richard, right? Because Richard just asked a question about like a, a lawn renovation project. And let's say you're gonna you're gonna establish a Bermuda lawn from seed. You're a glutton for punishment, right? What you would do is you get rid of the existing lawn. You would you I mean, kill the existing grass. And if you wanted to aerate, you could do that. Apply your seed. And then, um, you know, apply any fertilizer, any starter fertilizers you want to use, any biosimilars you want to use, and then you can water it. That's it. That's the order. So aerate, seed, water. And again, just to remember, or just not to beat a dead horse, but if you're going to do any kind of renovation project that involves seed, I would not uh, do pre-emergent. Now, the negative to that is you're going to be fighting weeds. You're going to have to be dealing with some weeds, uh, but you can always take care of those after the fact with post-emergent herbicides. So you have to kind of pick what's, you got to pick what you want, right? You got to pick your battles. You, you, unfortunately, you can't, like, kind of like in life, you can't have it all. You know, you got to pick like one or the other, which is more important to you. So I uh, so hope that helps uh, your nightmare. And that's the order. Aerate, seed, water. 
or actually aerate, you know, seed, biostimulants, fertilizer, anything else you want to apply, and then water. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, Dixie Hood Billy is, is back. She says, what do you recommend uh, granular or spray for weeds in a dormant lawn after scalp? Um, I think you're saying, I think you're saying gran, uh, uh, granular or grant granular or spray. Is, is that what you're asking me? Like, um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, what I would say is if you have weeds in your lawn after you're done scalping it, um, a liquid post-submergent herbicide is going to be, is going to be the most effective. You can use, um, there's a product from Spectracide that is a, um, it's a bag. It's like, an, uh, I don't have, I don't have a bag of it. Let me see if I can actually show you if I can find it. They make a product that is in, that comes as a granular that does work. It's okay. It's not as good as like post as, as liquid post emergent herbicides, but if you want something that's, that's a bit easier to do, easier to use, you could go with, I'll show you really quick here. You go with something like this. So this is a post emergent herbicide. It has a pre-emergent in it. Um, but the, the trick is if you're going to use this, you're going to want to, um, the lawn has to be wet. The grass has to be wet and then you're going to apply it and then let it dry. If, if you want to, to, if you're applying it for the post-emergent um, aspects of it, you know what I mean? So this is as far as a granular goes is what I would say to use. Um, but Frank, just to be completely honest, like uh, you're going to get a better result using a liquid post-emergent herbicide. So if you got weeds in your lawn after your scalp, um, you know, and it's a warm season lawn, then these guys, uh, Celsius, hang on, let me go over here, it's this camera, Celsius for broad leaves, and then certainty for um, Poannua. So these two are what I would use to eliminate weeds in a in, in a lawn, in a warm season lawn. Anyway, this is this is what I would I would go with. And it's not only for now, you can also use them in uh, in the summertime when temperatures get warmer. That is what I would go with. More expensive, but it works a lot better. So hope that helps, uh, Dixie Hood Billy. All right, next up we got. Uh, let me see. Oh, sorry. The guy that says, I can't, we can't see it in IG. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry, IG folks. Lord, sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I will link it, the Spectracide product. So what you guys need to do, IG folks, is come over to YouTube. That's what you need to do. Come over to YouTube and then you can, uh, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. This is the product. I'm linking it there in the chat. And these are what I would really recommend for getting rid of post, um, for, for getting rid of, uh, of weeds in your lawn. Like the liquid post emergent herbicide products are a lot better. And yeah, that's it. The Spectracide product there. That's uh, I just linked it there in the chat for you. Um, the Maestro. It's a, it's a bag. It's a granular bag. It's a, it's a bag with granular in it. Granular bags. All right. Okay. Next up is Jim Ruman. He says, "What do I need to do to clay in order to prepare it for seeding?" It's a great question, Jim. So. Here's what I would do. If you, as far as the question we had earlier around aeration, that is something I absolutely would do for a, a heavy clay lawn. It's going to help uh, relieve that compaction. It's going to help open it up. Um, if you are going to do a seeding project, what I would recommend is a, uh, a compost product of some sort. The one that I like is from Miramichi Green. It's a product called Carbonized PN. This is, um, it's biochar. And this is compost. It's, 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 it's two major ingredients in this product. As far as a, um, a product that is, is excellent for establishing a lawn from seed, or if you're doing sod, let's say you're going you're gonna to do a sodding project, you could prepare the lawn, like do all your cleanup work, put this down, like a thin layer of this over the entire lawn, and then lay your sod on top of it. It's going to help it establish um, faster. If you're doing seed, you could aerate the lawn, um, put down you know, your starter fertilizer uh, of choice, and then an also carbonized PN. So if you're looking for um, a formula, what I would say is, you know, you're not going to be seeding, you're not going to be seeding a clay, you're, uh, if you're in the Southeast, you're not going to be seeding really until late April, first week of May timeframe, because the soil temps need to be warmer to do, to do a seeding project and for it to work out well. So if you're going to be doing a seeding project, what I would say is um, you're going to aerate, and then you're going to use a you're going to use something like carbonized PN, some type of rich compost product. The nice thing about this is that there's no trash in it; it's very very clean product. Um, and then a starter fertilizer of some kind. So a good option is this, like the complete uh, 14714. You got a bit of everything in there. You got some nitrogen, phosphorus, um, um, potassium. You got some micronutrients, a bit of kelp, uh, a bit of humic acid. It's got everything. Like the tense the name complete. It's got a bit of everything in that. So it's like a, it's like an all in one product. So I would say. Um, Aerate, 
um, carbonized PN, a starter fertilizer, the complete uh, 14714, and then do your apply your seed and then water, 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 water. You know, allow it to get let it allow it to get established and then start mowing it. Again, if you're in the southeast, you're really going to want to be doing that in uh, late April, early May, and all those things that I was telling you about are um, at the golf course lawn store. At the top of your screen of your of your window, you should see a, a pinned comment that will um, that will take you to the to the store. So. Hopefully that helps, Jim. If you need anything else, uh, let me uh, let me know. Sounds like a fun project. Sounds like a lot of work, but should be fun. All right, two Trilla is up next. He says, "Yeah, I use Bio Advanced Algae and Moss Killer. It's a hose end sprayer, and most Home Depots and Lowe's carry it. You see it yellowing after three days. You just have to remove it manually. So there you go. There's another option for getting rid of some of the uh, we or not so getting rid of some algae um, and moss in your in your lawn. But again, I would um." You know, if it's if it's a temporary thing, yes, you could do something like this. But it, you know, once it gets warm or once it gets hot, it should it should go away as well too. So it's really your call, uh, which way you want to go, uh, Michael. Kay Randall is up next. He says, "Hi Ron, enjoying the chat. Thanks for all you do, Derek. Uh huh. You are most welcome, sir. I appreciate you coming and taking some time out of your Friday to hang out and uh, talk about lawn care and um, ask some really good questions. So you're you're very very welcome." All right, next up is your nightmare. He says, do you have a reliable source to see the average five-day soil temperature? At what temperature do I need to apply pre-emergent? Your nightmare, if you're in the Southeast United States, if you're in the Southeast, you should be applying pre-emergent now. If you're from Southern California, you know, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, you know, all the way to Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, you should be doing your pre-emergent now. You should be applying it. If, if you want to know as far as the, the best way, your, your five-day, you can Google and see average soil temps in my area, but that's gonna be at wherever the, they're taking the samples of wherever the weather station is. Just invest in one of these, like a little inexpensive um, soil thermometer. A meat thermometer will probably work just fine too. But one of these guys, and just go out there and just check it. Check it yourself. You know, you can check it for test it for yourself. But it, I, I will tell you that you, if you're if you're using this as a as a as a gauge to tell you when you should be applying pre-emergent, you don't need one of these. You should just be if you're in the southeast, you should be applying pre-emergent now. So what you can um, do for that, I'll give you a couple of options here. Under shop and then weed killer, if you click over on the side here, we have a filter for pre-emergent, you hit that. You got dithiopyr in a granular, you have prodiamine in a granular, or, and then you also have prodiamine in liquid forms depending on the size of your lawn. So if you have a big lawn, the five pound uh, t um, jug, you have a Bermuda lawn less than 6,000 square feet, this will work or you also have your granulars. So one, pick one of these and I would be applying that this weekend or as soon as you can order it and get it in stock, I would be, and it shows up at your house, as I, I'd be applying that. Like don't, um, do not wait. Do not wait to uh, to get to get your pre-emergent down. Um, but again, a soil thermometer, but again, if you're in the Southeast, you should be doing your pre-emergent uh, this time of year. So hope that helps sir. great question. And he says here, and what is your opinion on the blue stuff to add to liquid pre-emergent to show where it has been sprayed? I think it's a good idea. So what, you, what he's talking about, for anyone that doesn't know what he's talking about, so if we go back here to the weed killer section and then and look at everything, what he's referring to is turf mark. This is a marker dye. What this does, the, the whole purpose of this product is to make it easier for you to see where you have sprayed. So I think I have um, some images here. Um, whenever you whenever you spray your lawn with this, it's going to make it very obvious where you have um, where you apply the product. So if you're if you're newer to um, if you're newer to to spraying liquids on your lawn, or you just want to be just very precise about your application and make sure that one you're not having creating gaps when you're spraying, or you're not overlapping too heavily, marker dye is a great tool for that. So. Whenever I apply pre-emergent, like you guys saw in the video that I did, the live stream video I did a couple weeks ago on a Saturday, um, what I did is I did prodiamine and then also some turf marks and marker dye, some of this uh, in the tank. It really makes it stand out where it's where it is, especially if you're spraying it on a dormant lawn. You know, if you're looking at, you spray it on a, on a, on a, a brown lawn, it's gonna, you're gonna see like a, like a, it's gonna turn green. It's gonna look greenish in color because prodiamine is, um, is yellow. If you mix turf mark with it, it's going to turn a nice green color, like a dark blueish green color, and it's going to be very obvious to see where you sprayed. So if you are looking to really be um, to get the best result with your application, 
add some some marker dye in as well with um, whenever you're spraying liquids. So yeah, I, I would I would do that. I, it's what I showed to do. It's and it's, it's what I recommend. Um, you know, for people that are more that are more experienced applicators, if you don't want to do that, you, like you're really good on your overlaps and managing that. You don't necessarily have to, but it's a, it is a, a good thing to do. Like marker dye is a good idea. There's no negatives to it really. And it's because as far as um and question before I get this question too, as far as it's staining patios or or anything like that, like within a couple of days it will go away. So it, 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 the sun will help. Will um it'll it, it'll it'll ble I say bleach it out, but the the color will not permanently stain uh, concrete or anything that it gets on. So next up is uh, Fang Wen. He says, when is the what is the best time to apply PGR in the South? A topic near and dear to my heart. So if you were my neighbor in the Southeast United States, if you're in Georgia, when I like to do my first uh, growth regulator app is in the late April, early May timeframe. So what I use uh, Fang is um, Primo Max. Uh, this is when I, and again, when I would start, this would be the beginning of May. So May 1st, and then again, May 15th, then June and so on and so forth. Every, every two weeks, uh, throughout the entire growing season. Again, I'm going to have a blog post for you guys next week on the topic of PGRs and have some tips around like one, why do you want to use them? What the benefits are? And then this, this split application, uh, um, um, technique that I'm talking about, like I'll have that outlined in there as well. So. So I hope that helps. Yes, but as far as the time to apply it, once the, the lawn is fully greened up, you're already mowing it and the heat is starting to arrive, which around here is like late April, early May, that is when you can introduce a uh, growth regulator. And what I would say is you would do, you would do this every couple of weeks until uh, September-ish timeframe, you know, until you get to into the, into the fall. That's when you can, you can pull back on, on this. It's a great, it's a great product. If you've never used uh, Primo before, you would, um, you're going to really like the way your lawn looks um, uh, with it. Um, I've got content on on Growth Regulator. What I'll do for you, um, Fang, because you asked about it, is I'll, I'll find the video that I did um, last year that talks about how I do the split applications. Um, but again, you can also read the blog post that's coming out next week, but it's not next week yet. So in case you want to get ahead of it and do your reading now, I will um, I will find it here and I will link it in the chat for you, assuming search cooperates with me, which it is not. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll find that for you and and, uh, and and link that here in the chat once I once I find it. But yeah, the, the, answer, the answer to the question that you did ask, uh, late April, early May, is when I would do it. All right, next up is Keep It Real says, when should I start leveling my yard? Uh, same answer. So really, once the lawn is fully greened up, it, you're mowing it, uh, mid April, you can do that a little bit earlier, but April timeframe, May, that's you're in the season for doing any kind of top dressing or lawn leveling work. I have, um, I have done when I've done compost on my lawn, which, I've, which I'm probably going to do again this spring on the front lawn. Uh, I did that in, I've done that as, as early as, um, early April, right? So for, for that type of work for compost, just adding just a top dressing mix, not for the purposes of leveling, which is a lot lighter. You can do that in April timeframe. If you're going to be doing, like a sand soil mix where you're really trying to um, you know, to build up certain areas. You want the grass to be growing, you know, it's, you want it to be fully established, you know, fully greened up before you, you start doing um, any kind of leveling work. So if you were my neighbor in Georgia, what I would tell you is um, April, late April, early May timeframe. If you look at like most of my videos on top dressing, they've all been done in uh, the May timeframe for the, well, the uh, that involves sand have been done in, in the early May timeframe. For a couple of reasons, a couple of benefits for doing it then is you get the benefit of um, of all the rain that we tend to get in the southeast um, during that time of year. So as far as watering the the top dressing mix in and getting it getting it settled, uh, get like free water, and also it's not quite so hot. You know what I mean? If you you wait to do it in June, July, you can do it. I mean that's that's going to be fine too. But it's a lot hotter that time of year than it is in the uh, in the May time frame. So so hope that helps. Uh, uh, keep it real. Again, I've got lots of videos on top dressing. Uh, just go to the YouTube channel, look up like lawn leveling or Ron Henry top dressing, and you'll you can knock yourself out. There's tons of tons of content on that on that topic there. All right, next up is Mary J. Um, actually, let me see here. I have a question here from the Instagram. Let me get that really quick. It's from um, ATLM3. You got it. Sounds like someone that lives in Atlanta and drives an M3. That would be my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. 
He says, my zoysia is finally old enough to use pre-emergent. Do I water it in? Yes, yes you do. So pre-emergent, that's a great question. So any, for any of you guys that are doing pre-emergent on your lawn, um, pre-emergent, you need to water it in. It needs to get into the soil to work, to produce a desired result. So pre-emergent, you water it in. Most post-emergent herbicides, so like Celsius and Certainty, so guys, like so things like these, you would not water these in. These are designed to get on the leaf, on the foliar, dry, and that's how they're taken up and how they eventually kill the uh, kill the plant. But pre-emergent needs to be watered in. There are some post-emergent herbicides like um, like Image, Amazequin, that also uh, needs to be watered in. But for the but um, to, to answer the question you asked me, yes. Pre-emergent, watered in, and most post-emergent herbicides, you do not water in. So hope that helps, um, ATL M3. Uh, that's, a, that's, that's a good one. All right, next up is Mary J. She says, I seeded my lawn last year with Bermuda. Wanting it to fill in a lot more dense during prime growing, would PGR hurt me trying to do this? No, not really, Mary. Uh, the, the thing I would say is um, if you want to get your lawn to, to grow in and to, um, to, to, to spread, um, believe it or not, the more frequently you mow it, especially at a lower mowing height, you're going to encourage lateral growth. You're going to encourage the lawn to grow, the grass to grow out. You know what I mean? Because you're not if, if, if you're allowing it to grow tall, Bermuda, um, it's not going to have as much reason to spread as aggressively as if you're cutting it regularly at at shorter cutting heights. And by shorter, uh, I'd, I'd say an inch and a half or lower, that's going to really encourage Bermuda to really begin pushing out and growing laterally. Uh, growth regulator PGR will not help that or not, will not hurt that. Um, it's it's going to slow down top growth. And again, coupled with your regular mowing, it's going to, the lawn will, will fill out uh, nicely, should fill out nicely. So as long as you are mowing regularly, so at least twice a week it, when, during the growing season, um, you're fertilizing it properly. So it's getting enough nutrient and you're mowing it. You're going to be going to be good to go. That's, that's really, um, that's really all it takes. PGR is not going to, is not going to negatively impact um, how quickly the lawn spreads. It's, it's really your mowing practice is what is really helps encourage or trains the lawn to grow out instead of up. All right. Next up is A to Z on. I'm guessing you have zoysia based on your name. Probably a good guess, right? It says, Hey Ron, First spring with 14,000 square feet of Xeon zoysia sod. Congrats, sounds like fun. It needs a heavy dressing leveling after uh, chlorinating lime to raise pH from 5.6, uh, 16.48 and triple superphosphate. How would you time those moving forward? Okay, so you got a lot going on there. Okay, so if you're going to, so you wanna, you wanna do your, you wanna do top dressing, you want to, get your lime down and you want to uh, put a phosphate product down. Okay, so what I would say is um, the lime, you could do that now. You could do your lime product, you could do that now. I would, cause I mean, you know, pH takes longer to to go up than um, than your macros, like your your nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. So I would, I would get on that now. I would have gotten on that really like fall last year. Um, and then as far as your aeration, if you're going to, if you're gonna do top dressing, I would wait until, I'd, I'd make it part of your lawn leveling project. You know what I mean? So if you're gonna say you're gonna do your top dressing lawn leveling work in the um, in the late April, early May timeframe, do your aeration. And then if you want to begin, you know, putting in your fertilizers, like you got a 16-4 ratio you wanna use and a triple phosphate, you wanna do that as well too. I mean, you can introduce those fertilizers prior to you top dressing. But I mean, I, I would, your next application, in other words, if you're timing it, Say you're doing your first fertilizer app in late March. I would I would hold the second one till like late April, early May when you're going to do this top dressing work. You know what I mean? Because so, whenever you aerate the lawn, everything's opened up. The canopy's opened up. The, you know, it's it's a great time to fertilize, apply biosimilants. Like, like the soil is literally opened up, and, and it's, you're gonna you're gonna get more out of whatever you're applying. And then do your top dressing afterwards, and and then wait, just wait for it to recover. That's that is the order I would do things in. So pH, or sorry, the the, the lime, I would have done last fall. So next best time is tomorrow, and then everything else, like your 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 initial fertilizer application, once the lawn greens up. But I would time it such that you are doing a fertilizer app as part of your top dressing work. So aerate, fertilize, biosimilants, top dress. And, and really you would do that again in the um, the May timeframe. That's 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 how I would go about doing it. Great question. Sounds like a fun project. 14,000 square feet of Xeon Zoysia is nothing to play with, man. That's quite a uh, quite a job. Hopefully you have some friends and or family coming over. Hopefully they'll still be, remain friends and family after, you, after you're done with them with that kind of top dressing job. 
All right, Cedric G is up next. He says, Big Ron, it's almost go time. It is, it is, it is, um, it is almost go time. Um, and he says down here, disregard the what the. Okay, so I will disregard the what the. I'll just say it's go time. It is almost go time. Starting to see some green up in um, in my lawn. So guys, so I had, I had a couple of questions here I need to get through. And I'm, I'm trying to burn through everything else you guys are asking. But I had a question last week about... Um, about uh, around on the topic of aeration, someone asked me around um, an aerator for or a saw or roller for the um, Sterling for the Alet Sterling. So I'll show you here real quick. So I reached out to Alet. So Doers had this question last week. He says, "Have you heard of anything from Alet regarding eventually releasing a saw or roller for the Sterling? Any thoughts on the aerator cartridges they currently offer for the Sterling?" Thanks. Yeah, so I reached out to them and there's not really any plans to offer the Soro Roller, the aeration cartridge. Um, while they said that 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 did not work that well in their previous mowers, like in the Kensington mowers, it works very well in the Sterling. So they said that's, that's what you should go with if you wanna do some aeration work and you have a Sterling, that is what you should use. Um, um, not, uh, they're not, they're not gonna make a Soro Roller for it. And while I was on the phone with them, they also told me that if you do want one of those mowers, you need to order one because like they like literally, um, they're not going to be getting a ton of them this year. Like they, I guess some kind of supply chain issues. They're just not, they're not getting a bunch. So if you want a Sterling, uh, you know, you want one, uh, order one sooner than later, because again, once they, once their allocations they're getting here is gone, they're not gonna, they're, they're not likely to get much, much more in. So, um, so something for me to pass on to you guys. So doers, I told you I would answer your question this week and I came back and I did I'm out of my word. So, um, so yeah, go with the, go with the aeration cartridge that uh that they make for the sterling you don't need they're not going to make a, a soro roller at this point point. and fun fact while i look for the next comment you know i also asked them you know why do you guys call it a turf rake with the c27 with the commercial mowers and call it a scarifier with the sterling and the kensington he says well it's just, it's just we're, we're british we take any, any time we have a chance to make something more complicated than you know than than we can we we we, we uh we jump at it but but they are the two the, but he did confirm what I was saying is correct, that the turf rake and the scarifier, because um, really what they are calling a scarifier is really a turf rake. So what they call is, you know, on, on this, let me just show you guys really quick, because I'm talking about something and most of you guys are saying, what's he talking about? So on the Sterling, they call this, like this is their scarifying cartridge, right? That's what they're calling a scarifier. But if you go over to the pro mowers, to the, the, um, the, the C27, and you look at the turf rake, it is the same thing. You see what I mean? And the correct name for this is a turf rake. It's not a scarifier. It's a turf rake. So, those of you that have a um, that have a Sterling, it's still going to be called scarifier, but it's really a turf rake. So there you go. The two are the same. D Thatcher, completely different thing. All right. So on to the next question. So that was one I had to get through this week. So I promised if you I would answer it this week, and I did. And next up, we have T one thousand. He says, "Good Friday, all. What's going on, T one thousand? Thanks for coming to hang out." Appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your Friday to hang out in the uh, the live stream. And then next up is uh, Tony Israel. He says, hey, Ron. And actually, I actually need to get this up here. He says, hey, Ron. And yes, thanks uh, for the timely delivery of my order. Certainty and surfactant. I'm glad it made it to you quickly, sir. We, should, we, like, to ship, we like to ship things as quickly as possible because I know you like to wait for stuff like me. Uh, applied uh, both along with Celsius to knock out the weed breakthrough. Awesome, good stuff, uh, Tony. Just to make sure, you know, I'm sure you read the label. I'm sure you read the label. Um, but remember, if you're going after POA with certainty, you need to use a, a heavier rate than what you would use for like sedges. So just something to keep in mind. You need like like one large scoop, two gallons of water for good control of POA. Um, so just just something to keep in mind. But yeah, I'm glad it made it to you quickly. Made it in a timely manner. Uh, that's what we aim for. So uh, um, happy days. Enjoy, enjoy slaying weeds in your uh, in your lawn. Enjoy slaying weeds in your lawn. All right. Next is Reese. He has a question. He says, "I want to kill my common Bermuda to plant a nice hybrid, um, or more likely, Sada hybrid, because most most hybrids, Reese, you have to get them in Sada. They don't. They don't. They're not really. Um, they're not commonly available in seed. You have to sod most hybrids." But anyway, you're saying, can I start the kill now? Spray, then power rake it to weaken, and then spray whatever continues to green or wait till fully green. I would wait for it to green up if it were me. I would do that. I mean, you, you, I, you know, we're not that far off. And that combination I was telling the other viewer about of 41% um, of glyphosate and Fusilay 2, that combination is very good for getting rid of Bermuda. Like th those two mixed together, like 
individually, it would take multiple rounds to do it, but the two of them mixed together is um, it's it's a good one and done um, as far as killing off the Bermuda. And I would wait. I frankly I would wait until it is greening up because you just you're gonna get a better result with it, right? You're gonna have you're gonna have it um, you're gonna have the the grass is actively growing. So as far as it taking up the herbicide, it's just gonna work better, and you're gonna get a a better result, which you're gonna be happy with. So um, so I, I think I've already linked that in the chat. If you're not, you can always scroll up, but I will, because you asked, let me, let me just put it here in the, uh, in the chat really quick for you. So this is the glyphosate product. Again, this is not the only one. I think there's like Ranger. There's other ones that are comparable to this, but just, you can use this one. So this is the, um, this is eraser. This is the 41% glyphosate. And then for, um, the Fusilade, you're going to want to use, you can use this. This is the link to that. So this, those two you can mix together. Um, read the label for application rate, for the application rates you should be using. For Fusilade, I believe, if memory serves me, it's half an ounce of that with um, one and a half to two ounces of the, um, with the, of the glyphosate of the eraser. Um, mix with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet. So if you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, just take those rates and then multiply them uh, by, um, by four. But again, check the label, read the label. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty, I believe those, those, those numbers are correct. Just, but just again, check the label. Label is law. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, sounds like a fun project. I would kill it off. And then, you know, as far as, you know, doing any kind of sod or if you're glutton for punishment, a seeding project, um, then, then you could go forward with that. The thing about it is if you're going to go with, uh, let's say you're going with seed, right? you really are going to want to wait until the lawn greens up a bit more anyway to kill things off because you can't really get a good result with Bermuda grass seed until soil temps are in the 60s, you know? So, and that's, if you're, again, if you're in Georgia, if you're my neighbor in Georgia, that would be late April, early May timeframe. So by then your lawn's going to be green. So if you, if you wait till, you know, the second, third week of March, you know, last part of March to begin killing it off and then, you know, let it, let it die off because it's going to take a couple of weeks for it for it to fully, um, fully, fully go away. Then you can rake it out, get rid of it, do your prep work, put down carbonized PM, whatever you want to do to prepare the soil. And then if you decide to go with seed, you can go with seed. If you decide to sod, you can sod. You're going to be right in the, in the perfect window for doing that. If you want my opinion, I would use sod. It's way easier, a lot less headache, and you're going to have the lawn is going to, you're going to have a lawn faster, right? Like you, like the question that Mary J asked earlier, right? She asked a question about like, how do I get my lawn that I seeded last year to fully fill in? With Bermuda grass seed, even if you do a reasonably good job preparing it, I mean, you, you still going to have some areas that are going to grow in really well. And you're going to have some areas that are going to be lagging behind. So seed can work, but it's not like sod where you literally one day you don't have a lawn, they come and they install the sod or if you're doing it, you install the sod and then you've got grass, right? So you go from like no grass to grass, like just like that, which is, um, which is most, most people find that more attractive than, um, than the seed route. You know what I mean? So uh, that is what, that's my two cents. You didn't ask, but I'm giving you my opinion anyway. So that's, that is what I would do. So I hope that helps as far as when, to, when and how to kill it off. And again, if you decide to go forward with that eraser and fusilade combination, read the label, check the label, check, double check my race to make sure that you are good to go. But I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm correct on that. All right, next up is Dwayne's World. He says, um, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Love seeing so many products back in stock at the store. It's go time. Yeah, man, we're finally getting there. The only thing we're missing is um, a liquid fertilizer product, like the Greens the Greens Plus product, um, which is not not a super popular product, like, but it's still one that people ask for. But if you guys look, yeah, Dwayne called it. If you guys are wondering now, if you, you want to talk up for your fertilizer for this season, the lawn fertilizer section is ripping and rearing to go. We got all the, the, the quality and lovely fertilizer options here from Lebanon Turf in here. You got your Humic Max, your Complete, and your Stress. And then we have the new fertilizer, the new kit on the block, the new contender from Miramichi Green, the organic. That just went live uh, yesterday. So, I mean, this is, this is live now. This is in, in stock now, shipping. Good to go. So any of you guys that pre-ordered it is your, you should have all gotten tracking information today already. Um, and then if you order today, it'll ship uh, early next week. It'll ship Monday or early next week. And then as far as liquids, you got Turfplex, which is my, my, as far as, um, other than 901C, this is my favorite liquid fertilizer. It's a great product. You think you look at it, you've got nitrogen, but a little bit of phosphorus, a little bit of potassium in it. And it's also got micronutrients in there as well. So as far as like a liquid fertilizer, that is like a great all in one. This is, is, is a great option. So if you look here, the label, so you got your, your macros, but then also you have, again, a bit of iron, a little bit of manganese, a little bit of zinc. And uh, yeah, so great, great fertilizer option. 
And then Nutrizolve is also in stock now, which is a purely a micronutrient. So what I do with these, if you guys are curious, I mean, you didn't ask this question, Dwayne, but the way I do this, if you're going to go with Turplex, um, and I, I will use Turplex and Nutrizolve together, but what I'll do is I'll back the rate down on Nutrizolve. Because if you look at the label for Nutrizolve, it tells you to spray it to mix six ounces of Nutrizolve with a gallon of water and spray that over a thousand square feet. But because Turplex already has some micronutrients in it, I reduce the rate of Nutrizol. So instead of using it like six ounces per thousand square feet, I use it at three ounces per thousand. So I choose three ounces of, of, um, of Nutrizol, six ounces of Turfplex. That allows me to get like the, the boron, the copper, the molybdenum, the micronutrients um, that Turfplex does not have. It also has a little bit more iron than Turfplex has in it. So th these two together, are a great combination. Just just back the rate down on this. So you're saving product. I mean, you're not going to hurt anything if you apply it at full rate, but like, you know, stuff costs money. So why why apply it any ha any heavier than you have to? So these two is a great combination and another good combination is release 901C and Nutrizolve. So these two are a good combo and then these two are a good combo. So it just depends on which way you want to go. Um, and in the description of these, of the, the product description, there's a video where I talk I talk about that in more detail as far as how I combine them and how I use them and application rates and all that fun jazz, you can get an awesome result. But yeah, Dwayne, I'm happy. You know, it's, the timing was good that things finally got back in stock. You know, so let's let's hope they uh, hope they stay that way. So if you need your stuff, get it now. Uh, get it, get it now. All right, next up is Gary Freeman. He says, hey, Ron, and hashtag Stripe Action Gang. Uh, thanks, Ron, for the insight on my soul test. You are very welcome, sir. Thank you for that. No, um, hey guys, see, and kids, if you're watching, you see, I'm using the cup. I'm, wearing, I'm using the cup you guys got me. So they got me, a, kids got me this cup. So I said, next time I was on live stream, I'd show them. See, so there you guys go. So you guys give me a gift. I actually use that. I just stick it in the cupboard. So, so there you go. Um, now as far as, uh, yeah, you're, you're very welcome, uh, Dwayne. It makes it a lot easier, dude. You don't, you don't realize, like sometimes people will, will, will email me and they'll say, hey, I want some options for doing fertilizing my lawn this spring. What should I use? And I'm like, Where's the soil test results? I mean, I can I can give you some fertilizers that will work, but I mean, if you want to like get the best result to your matching what the soil needs to what you're putting in it, that's where a soil test is a, is a good thing. And you did that. We got you an answer, and now you are all good to go. And the thing I would tell you guys, um, as far as soil tests, the one that I like and, and recommend is the one from My Soil. The cool thing about this one, if we're using the gram, you guys can see this. The cool thing about this is that one, it's very easy to use. You get your results within a week. So if you, if you had one of these and you took samples tomorrow and you mailed it out tomorrow, within six, normally within six days, seven, less than a week anyway, you get an email from them with your results. And it not only with, does it give you results, but it also tells you, gives, offers recommendations of products you can use to help correct any of the deficiencies. So it's it's like literally one of the best investments you can make in your lawn care program because now when you go out and you buy something on the golf course lawn store, you know, hey, I'm buying a fertilizer that is what my soil needs. It's, it's based, you're, you're fertilizing and making decisions based on data versus just uh, versus just just guessing. It makes my life a lot easier as far as recommendations too, so. Anytime you guys ask your questions on what should I be putting down on my in my lawn, please attach a soil test result. It makes it I'm, I'm able to do a better job for you if you uh, if you do that. And we'll say it again just because, and we'll show it up again just because Alex is um, is is you know golf course lawn store royalty. He says happy Friday evening lawn nerds. Whatever you know you are. You're one too. All right, next up is T1000. He says hi Ron. It's in been 50s and 80s off and on in Texas. Is it too early for a scalp, aerate, and top dress? Here's what I would say. It is not too early to scalp. Um, as far as aeration and top dressing, I would wait for the lawn to be fully established. And by that, I mean it's growing or actively growing before I do those things. So yes, you may be getting some hotter temps, some hot days and, and you know things are definitely warming up. But if you're not out there mowing it a couple days per week, a couple times per week, I would say give it some more time on the aeration and on the top dressing. So uh, don't, you don't need to do that just yet. There's no, there's no real rush on those. Um, again, the April, April, May timeframe is a good time for doing it. I've done, I've done aeration as early as March and I've done it. You guys have seen what I've done. I've done it as late as, um, like May timeframe. Um, and there's no real, there's no real reason to do it super early. It's not going to hurt anything, but, but if you can wait, if you're playing the top dress, wait till you're going to top dress the lawn because you're gonna get some other benefits. One, you know, if you're going to be fertilizing or doing biosimilants like Essential G, it's a great time to fast track those nutrients into the soil. It helps the top dressing mix integrate better with the existing soil. 
in that way, you only have to punish yourself of only one time, you know, having the aerator drag you all over the place. So if you're going to do it only once in the season and top dressing is in the cards for you, I would put, would pair those two together. I would do the top dressing and the aeration at the same time, April, May time frame. scalping. You could do that now if you, if you wanted to. You're totally, totally your choice. Or you could wait till March to do it. It's, just, it's really your call. You still got time for all three of those things you asked about T1000. You still got time to decide. All right, next up is Hustleonian. He says, um, thanks for all your help, Ron. You're very welcome. He says, I got my pre-emergent down. I want to zap some existing POA with image. Any thoughts? Image is a good product. It is a slow, it, it's slow to work. So will image kill POA? Yes, it does kill POA. It is effective against POA. It's just slow. It's just, you have to be very patient. A, a better option if you really want to get rid of the POA faster, especially now that we're starting to get warmer temps, so herbicides will work a bit better, is to use uh, certainty. This is what I would use for POA. I would use, I would get this, I would mix one large scoop of this with two gallons of water, add some surfactant along with it. And of course I'm telling you all this and you can't actually see my screen. So um, this is what I would do. I would get certainty and I would get surfactant, these two, and uh, and mix up, you know, a little two gallon um, batch of that. This is great for spot spraying. If you want to put some marker dye in there as well, you can do that as well too. That is what I would use if you're if you're really um, if you really want to get a, a a faster result with getting rid of a poanua. Um, you know, image can work, but it's going to likely take a couple of applications, a couple of rounds of it, and it's just it's just slow, just due to the nature of that of how image how that particular herbicide works. It's just a, it's a slower one, whereas certainty, you know, two weeks. I mean, especially now that it's warming up, a couple of weeks you're going to start seeing. It, the color go out of it and then it will really ramp up and die off. So that is what I would use is certainty. You can get it and the surfactant at the golf course lawn store under the, uh, the weed killer section. So that's what I would, uh, I would go with Hustlonian. You know, I see your name. I was thinking about like who's, uh, Houstonians, like, you know, the people that are from this, from Houston, you call them Houstonians. So I, when I, you say, when you say Hustlonian, I make, makes me think that you're from Texas, but maybe not, but that's what always comes to mind anytime I see your, uh, your, your handle in the live stream. All right, next up we got Mr. Robert Rainey. He says, evening, everyone. What's going on, Robert? Mr. Green up early. Hopefully you're doing well, sir. I know you can't you can't wait to get going as far as uh, as far as your lawn care program this season. All right, uh, Dalvin, let's see here. He says here, he says, um, hi, Ron. Did the link for the Golf Course Anatomy change? I am having trouble finding the site, the site message. Hmm. Um, it shouldn't have changed, Dalvin. So I'll show you. So it's still, there's a couple different ways you can find it. So um, if the link that should be in your email should still be there, but as well, you also have the Academy login right here on the website, right? So right on the store, it'll take you right there. So you can log in there. So if you ever, if you ever wonder how to get to the Academy, you can literally come to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to Lawn Academy, and then go to Academy login right there, and it'll take you to the login. Also at the very bottom of every page, I think as well, do I have it here? Yeah, I do. The very first link at the bottom of every page is also the Golf Course Lawn Academy login. It takes you to the same place, right? So um, so as far as that goes, again, the, in the menu option, you got the login along with course details and then the footer on the store, you've also got the login. So no, it hasn't changed. It's still the same thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, you should be should be good to go as far as, uh, as far as that goes, as far as accessing it. If you have any problems, email me, shoot me an email. My email, it's funny, I've gotten through a couple of hours tonight and I haven't put my email up yet one time yet. So ron at golfcourselawn.com, that's my email address. If you send me an email there, uh, if you're still having issues, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. But one of those two places, on the store, at the very bottom of the store in the footer, you'll be able to see a link, a login link to the Academy. And if you're forgetting the Facebook group, which you should, that should be bookmarked in your, anyway, but if you, Facebook group, the link to the private Facebook group is also within the course as well. So if you have trouble finding that, it's in there as well. So hope that works, sir. If you have any problems, let me know, let me know. All right, Will Dog uh, Hail State is up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron. A few minutes late to your program, Ron, but today was the season opener for my college baseball team, Hail State, best maintained amateur athletic field, national champs. Check it out. I'll have to take your word for that. Let me let me take a screenshot of this and actually find out. I, I don't know what Hail State is, so I'll have to check them out. But uh, to, whenever you say it's like the best maintained amateur athletic field, that's a, that's a big, it's a big statement. It's a big statement. So I'm going to have to, if, you, if there's pictures of it online, I'll have to check it out and see what you are, uh, what you're working with. So 
Good stuff. Guys, if you guys are enjoying the content, uh, enjoying the, the show tonight so far, if you guys would not mind hitting the like button, it doesn't cost you guys anything. It's free. It's a great way to support the channel, to support the live stream. Just go on, if you're on YouTube, um, just move your button up there and just tap the like button. If you're on Facebook, you can give this a heart. If you're on um, Twitter, you can also give this a heart. And if you're on uh, on the Instagram, you guys can can heart this as well. So any kind of engagement really does help out. So I... Really do appreciate it if you guys would not mind. Thanks for all the love and and support. All right, next up is Demarculus Thompson. He says, greetings, Ron, from Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, looking to top dress this season. When is a good time to top dress? Everyone tap that like button ever so gently. Good time to top dress is in the um, April, May timeframe. It depends on where you are in the country. You know, I, I keep saying, throwing those that, that, that timeframe out, but the best answer, the most correct answer is it depends. Whenever your lawn is actively growing, meaning you're out there mowing it a couple times a week, like your lawn is fully green, you're good to go ahead and top dress it. And, and around here in Georgia, that's like late April, early um, May timeframe. If you're doing like leveling work, if you're just doing just compost, you can do it a bit earlier, but if you're doing like a, a leveling project, then uh, April, um, May, late April, early May timeframe. Now, as far as, as far as top dressing, and this doesn't necessarily apply to you, DeMarcus, but if any of you guys are in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, or Tennessee, and you want to use the top dressing mix that I recommend, there's one that Super Sod makes. It's, um, it's, their, le it's their level mix, which is, I'll show you here really quick. Let me um, find a window here. Yep, so there. So this is, um, this is the stuff that I, I've I've had really good results with. So you got a couple of options. You have you have the um, just the compost, and then you also have the um, the level mix. The level mix is seventy percent USGA quartz sand, so it's screen sand. There's not going to be any trash in this. Seventy percent sand and thirty percent of this product of the of the compost. You guys saw that pop up that just came up there with the thirty dollars off. If you use this link that they've given me for you guys. Um, in addition to $30, it'll take an additional $5 off of the sale they're already running. So you'll get $35 off the current price, and that is good until the end of this month. So if you're looking for a top dressing mix and um, and you are in the, again, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, or Alabama, then the Super Side Leveling Mix is, again, literally, it's it's the best stuff that I've used um, on, on my line. It's, it's really, really good stuff as far as um, there's just no trash, no debris. I used to have a, I used to have a video here. I just show off to really illustrate how much, how little garbage came, came out of it. Um, where I did my entire back lawn with this stuff with like, uh, like sorry, six or back, six bags or so on the entire back lawn. And I showed how much, how much, um, how much garbage came out of it. I wonder if I can still find it here. Cause it's actually, it's actually pretty impressive. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, I still got it. Here it is. Yeah. So look at this video here. So you see that? See all those pebbles like that. If if you look at the size of my back lawn, and I put a dime there for reference, like over my entire back lawn, which is you know eleven thousand ish square feet, right? You see the size of a dime. That is what came out of my back lawn um, as far as like like foreign debris in that leveling mix. So for an area like you know again as large as my lawn is, that's um that's that's pretty good. That's really that's really really good. I mean most most uh, most top dressing mixes that you use, there's going to be a lot of garbage. There's going to be twigs and bark and all those kinds of stuff. This stuff is, is, um, it's more expensive, but like in most things in life, you get what you pay for. Like you're not going to be spending a bunch of time picking up big rocks. You're going to tear up your mower and that kind of thing out of it. It's very clean stuff. And again, if you want to save a little bit of money, there's a link there in the chat now that'll save you, um, save you $5 off their current sale. But then even after that, like say you want to wait until, the May time frame, you can um, you can still use that link and it still still save you some money. It's good it's good for the entire year. All right, but yeah, for your question, Demarcus, you're gonna want to wait until um, May, April May. All right, uh, DJS One says, "My I got my Hudson Starlight last year. If Lee has another meetup at Real Rollers, I'll bring it out." Yeah, cool man. I'd like to see one of those. I've, I've heard cool things about that mower. It's like the push. I think that's the high end the, the push reel mower, right? I've never used one myself or seen one in person myself. But it looks looks like a cool concept. So yeah, if you if you got one, you can uh, you can bring it out. You can bring it out. Um, let's see here. And then Dalvin says, uh, never mind. It looks like the URL I had saved bookmark from a year ago has changed. Well, so there you go, um, Dalvin. So hopefully that I think I got you squared away as far as as um, how to access the course. If you need anything else, you know, if you have any problems, again, shoot me an email. All right. Next is up slash. It says I need to do my second pre-emergent 
um, down doing split treatments. Okay, that's an option. I mean, there's there's definitely people that like to do the split up approach, which again, if you're you know I guess if you're doing that, you know, whenever you want to time your second application. So that's definitely another another way to go. And then uh, Will Dog State Hail State is back. He says, "Grr, I've been seeing uh, peeps of green, but upper twenties tonight will knock it back. It shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be too bad because really, it's just it's just tonight, Will Dog. You know, you talk about the temperatures being cooler, but if you look here, if you look that after tonight, it goes yes. Yeah, so tonight it's going to be twenty nine, but if you look after tonight, it's going to be like the high, the low will be high thirties tomorrow night and then from there it's the 40s 50s 60s as the low so we are going to be square into party time it's about to be party time man so yeah tonight is the last um again assuming the weather holds out tonight is the last of the really cold weather and then from there it's going to be upward and onward we're going to be really taking off as far as the lawn goes so um so don't you worry don't you worry don't get too don't don't let, let not your heart be troubled it'll be all right Okay, uh, Andrew Phillips is up next. He says, uh, Ron, question about the, on the soil test probe. So you're talking about this. Yes, okay. Um, he says, my soil is clay and, the, and plugs stick in the probe and it's difficult to remove even using a stick to remove them. Any suggestions on easy removal of the plugs? Thanks. Huh. Um, I, that's, a good, that's a good one. Um, I tend to just bang it against the inside of my bucket um, and they, they fall out. Again, my soil is not too clay-y at this point. Um, you mean, what you might want to do is just take, instead of taking a, a stick, which if it's really heavy clay, you may need like a screwdriver. So maybe take a small screwdriver with you. Like, you know, take your, pull your core and take your screwdriver and use that to, 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 to scrape it out, to push it out. Um, again, in my case, little, a good, a couple of knocks against the side of the bucket and it, it falls out for me. But if, if yours is a little bit stickier, a little bit, you know, a little, a little, uh, a little more tacky, then getting like a like a flathead and just kind of running that along to push it to push to push the core out uh, that that should work uh, work just fine. So sorry you're dealing with that, but that that will get you squared away again. Depending on how how um, how dense or how compacted your soil is, a stick might not even might not work too well. You may need something like a screwdriver to really to do it. So hope that helps, Andrew. Small screwdriver should do the trick. Um, let's see. Um, Will Dog says that I use my, he says clay soil, uh, sucks. He says, I use my pro plugger because the tapered tube makes it a snap. I guess you're, you're pulling some serious plugs. If you're, you're some serious cores, if you're using a pro, a pro plugger to do it, but I mean, Hey, whatever works, right? Whatever works. I guess, do you, do you pull a big plug out and then just take some of it, take some of the soil off and then just reinsert it? Is that what you're doing? Uh, cause that's, that's, that's quite the core, uh, Will Dog. That's quite the core. All right, next up is King Khan. He says, checking in. I'm glad to see the Organic 444 uh, made it into the club. It is, it is, it's here. It is in stock. If you order it, it will um, you know, it will ship uh, early next week. So yeah, it's in stock now. Got plenty of it, should be good to go. Got Essential G, so that is also, we got the February shipment of that. So if you guys want for, uh, Essential G, uh, go ahead and load up. Yeah, I, I keep, every time I say this, I jinx myself. I said, I think I've got enough of it this time that we tour, we should be good to go, but... But by all means, do your worst. Do your worst. So we got both Essential G and the um, and the new uh, organic fertilizer in stock now. Uh, so those are available uh, for order and shipment. All right, No Name is up next. He says, uh, Ron, with this lovely Georgia clay soil, how much lime did you have to use to get your pH up when yours was a little bit low? I believe you made a video. Thanks for all the help and support. Oh, I think I did. I, I went heavy, um, No Name. I think I went like 30, 30 pounds. I, I believe I've looked at the video. It's, it was on the higher end. It's either 30 or 40 pounds per thousand square feet um, is what I, is what I went, went with. I'll, I'll see if I can find the video and link it to you. Um, but yeah, I, I did go heavier on the, yep, here it is right here uh, on, on the lime application um, in that video. And then normally my normal, our normal maintenance rate is like a 20 pound per thousand um, is what I, is what I'll put down. You know, I don't quite as heavy, but that, that, in that video that you're referring to, um, I did that in like June and that, that really did the trick that really got things in a much better spot. So if you want to see the lime application video at no name, um, lime application video, there you go. That's the video you can watch that will, um, that will, will cover that talks about the product I use, how to choose between lime, between like a dolomitic or calcitic lime, 
Um, you know, all that all that is covered in there. Well, I'll look for the next comment. So for any of you guys that are, that are gonna do, are, are looking to do a Lime application on your lawn, so your pH is low and you're trying to raise it. If you have, um, the way that I remember it is this, all right? Dolomitic Lime has ma more magnesium in it than calcitic lime does. So the way to remember it is if you look at your soil test results and your magnesium is low, go with the dolomitic. The way I remember it is that D, the letter D is closer to the letter M in the alphabet. So if my magnesium is low, go with the dolomitic, uh, dolomitic lime. If it is not low, meaning your magnesium levels are fine, just go with the calcitic. So there's dolomitic and calcitic lime. Dolomitic if your magnesium is low, calcitic if your magnesium levels are okay. But I cover that in that video that I just linked in the chat um, as well, so. Should be good to go. All right, looking for our next question here is Manuel, um, I'm, I'm gonna mess this up, At, uh, Araujo, Araujo, I think so, maybe. Manuel Araujo, I think, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm butchering up. If I am, I apologize. I'm not, not mispronouncing your name uh, badly on purpose. He says, quick question in SoCal, what would you recommend for weed control and reseed for a backyard that has a hodgepodge of grass, but is pr pr predominantly Bermuda and turf type tall fescue? Ugh. Okay, so that's a tough one because so what are you trying to what are you trying to um, what are you trying to keep? Are you gonna are you trying to get rid of the Bermuda and keep the fescue, or are you trying to keep the rid of the keep the fescue and get rid of the Bermuda? Because as far as post emergent herbicides you have to be um, careful about that. I mean, so what you can do um, is triad, I believe is labeled for use on tall on fescue grass. Let me check here really quick to make sure. I wanna make sure I'm not gonna give you something that's gonna hurt your, um, yeah, it is good. Yeah, so you're good to go. So what I would say, what I would say for you, um, uh, Manuel, if you're looking for a post emergent to clean up a lot of the, the weeds in your lawn in preparation for a seeding project, is if we go here to the golf course lawn store is this product so normally i would tell you hey get like celsius and certainty that's a great op option for like warm season grass or if you have cool season grass you're going to do a seeding project get like tenacity but if, because you have both you got bermuda and fescue um either one of these whichever you choose is going to make the other grass mad so if you use celsius it's going to make the it's going to hurt the fescue if you use tenacity it's going to hurt the bermuda we don't want to do that so another option is to use something like this um that's a broadleaf of three. It's a it's a three way from um um called uh, called Triad. This is safe for both uh, fescue and Bermuda. So, it's a it's a three in one. I'll just send you a link here to it really quick, and I'll post that in the chat. This is what I would use for your cleanup work in preparation for um you know for for for, for getting the lawn ready to do some seeding. So I'll link it to you here, at Manuel and Triad. Now, if, you're, if your goal is to keep the Bermuda and if your goal is to keep the Bermuda and get rid of the fescue, in addition to the weeds, that is when you could go with something like, um, with like Celsius, because then Celsius is safe for Bermuda, but not so safe for cool season grass. It's gonna damage or, or, and or kill cool season grass. Um, and the other way around, if you're, well, tenacity is not gonna kill Bermuda. It's gonna make it, it's gonna injure it, but it's not gonna really, it's not gonna permanently get rid of it. But if, but if you're, if you're, if, if what you want to do is keep both of them, let's say, hey, I like my fescue and Bermuda lawn. I just wanna get rid of the weeds because I'm gonna do, I guess, a fescue seed here in a little while. Um, the triad should do a pretty good job of knocking out a lot of the broad leaves that you're dealing with in your, in your lawn. So hope that helps. Um, you get the link there in the chat and that should, uh, that should fix you up. That should fix you up. All right. Um, next up we have, um, Dalvin Larry. Yeah. He says, he says, is there a plant? It's a good question. Is there a plant to add a turf raking, vertical cutting video to the golf, uh, golf, lure, golf course lawn Academy, non-chemical options still waiting on my mower to arrive is it's a real possibility the hardest thing i've ever done so far is waiting i've thought about it dalvin the thing about it is right is that a lot of people don't necessarily have a mower um that they can use for verticutting or or and or turf raking um i'll do some content this year i have no, no issues with doing that i can i can add a module on verticutting and turf raking i mean it, it's good for those of you that do have have a mower um that can that can do that it's um I, I can cover it. So that's a good point. I, I will screenshot that. That's a good, that's a video that I will add to the Academy uh, this year. That's a good, that's a great suggestion. That's a great suggestion. So I, I will do that. But again, it's it's going to have um, limited, the reason why I had to jump to do it last year is I thought, eh, you know, like how many people have like a, an Alet Sterling or or a mower that they can do verticutting with, but it seems like that's becoming more and more popular. Like you guys are starting to to get more into that. So 
having that um, having that in there will be um, will be a good be a good module addition. It'll help round out round out the course. I try. Here's the thing with the course. I I I, I try not to make. I, I want to make it to where you can get through it. I don't want to add how like 50 videos in there because then you won't watch it all. I want to have it. I want it to be where it's where what's in there is important. And if you watch what, what is in the course, you're going to be in a good spot to go off and, and dominate your neighborhood, right? That's, that is the goal. So it's, so it's purposely, I don't, I don't try and make it any more bloated than it needs to be, but the, you, a good point on the uh, turf raking and verticutting, it does make a huge difference in the appearance of your lawn. So it, there should be a module on it and I will, uh, I will take care of that this year. So Academy members look out for that. That will, um, we'll get that, get that filmed and get that into the, uh, the course. I need the grass to turn green first though. I need, I want to do it with a, with a nice green lawn. All right. Next is Luis, um, Ayabarreño. He says, and Luis, you know, at some point you need to tell me if I'm pronouncing your name right. Cause every week you're on here and every week I pronounce and I'm, I'm talking in the chat and I just, I, I feel bad if I'm mispronouncing it. I think I'm close, but uh, I just want to make sure. He says, Ron, I used grandeur and liquid fertilizer program last year with great results. I'm using your products this year. Can you share your thoughts on the multi 402 use uh, results? Thanks. Yeah. So it's, um, it was one of the products when I was, when I was trying out some of the products from Ecologel, I, I liked it. It was a, it was a cool, um, I think it has their, their, their C, their kelp product mix in with it. Oh, let me get over here and I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about. So we go over to liquid fertilizer to lawn fertilizer. And do I have a liquid fertilizer filter? I do. Yeah, so what you're talking about is this. So it has a bit of iron um, and it also has, I believe their, their kelp product in there as well. If For me, for me, right, this is not one that you ever see me really talk about or even, or, or, or recommending. The thing is I, I, I started with this, it's on the store. So there are some people that, that buy it and like it. So I, I keep it in stock, but really there's, for me anyway, there's not a lot of reason to use this um, over over like a turf plex. So for me, I would go with turf plex, bloom plex, or if you want like a slower release, you're going like more of a, um, of more of a, of a, of a, of a you want more, more potassium than like the greens plus will work well. But these three from Ecologel are my staples, those three. And then of course, obviously the nine the 901 C, right? The, from Miramichi Green. So 901 C, if you're looking for a biostimulant product as well, and then from just a straight fertilizer, turf plex, bloom plex, or greens plus. The, this one um, was literally added. Um, it was just something I was testing out when I first started um, testing out some of the Ecologel products. And I, I, it's a good product. I just don't really see where it fits when you have Turfplex, um, Bloomplex, and um, and and uh, 901C, especially since um, I use the carbon kit, which includes a kelp product with it. So if I'm already spraying a kelp product on my lawn whenever I'm using Turfplex um, or 901C. So that kind of makes the 402 product redundant in my case. You know what I mean? So if you, not saying it we were redundant for everybody, but in my case, I don't I don't use it because I don't I don't need like there's nothing that it does that when I'm already using doesn't uh doesn't already fill so hope that helps Luis. that's a it's a, it's a good question it's a fair question it's part of the re and it's the reason why you never see me really talk would talk about it because it's just it's it's like a um it's like a solution in search of a problem given everything else that i that i use on the, on the lawn so hope that helps sir i would if you like the pro the, the results you got with the uh, um the, the products you, you used last year or if you're looking for um the, the you know the, the the recommendations that i would say from the golf course lawn store, I would say Turfplex and Nutrizolve or 901C and Nutrizolve. If you need a higher phosphorus um, fertilizer, then Bloomplex Nutrizolve. So that 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 would be my that'd be my uh, my thing. So you know, you notice that Nutrizolve is like the staple. It's it's like it goes in all those because it has the micronutrients. It has the the little additional iron, give you that green pop uh, as well, right? So hope that helps. Uh, good question. And now you know. Now you know why I don't really talk about the 402 product. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but just I, I, it's not something that I would, I would ever need, really need to use. All right, next up is Devin. Devin's in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Spring is so close. Looking forward to some good turf talk tonight. Well, hopefully I'm not disappointing you too much, uh, Devin. We are close. I'm getting some green here. Look, man, I mean, uh, you know, granted, compared to like Papa Mo's Low and, you know, Robert Rainey and all these guys and, you know, that have like really good looking lawns and their lawns are already turning green. Like I, I've got like a little, I got a little taste of green coming through. Like, you know. Like, you know, you know what this is like, you, you know, like when you have a, you know, a guy and he's like, Hey, I'm growing a mustache. You know, when you're younger and you want to grow your mustache, you're like, Hey, I got a little fuzz coming through. I got, I got a little something coming through. It's the same thing with my grass. I got like a little bit of, 
I got some green fuzz popping in there. So don't, don't rain on my parade. It's going to, here in the next couple of weeks, it's really going to take off. So, so yeah, we are, we are on our way. We are very close. And, and the, the temperature trend over the next 10 days is really going to support green up here soon. So it should be good times. Hopefully you're doing well. We got to get you back on the show. I'm sure in Colorado Springs, you guys are probably, are, are your greens still covered up? Or have you taken the covers off the greens yet? Or are you guys still, uh, still too soon for that? You got to, got to come in sometime and update us, man. What's going on? All right. Tavares Allen is up. He says, um, actually, no, DJ one says, Papa Mo's low. I like it. Be glad to bring it out. And then Tavares Allen up. He says, Ron, my Kentucky bluegrass rye grass mix has stayed green all winter here in Kansas City. Even with the snow, I use Turfplex in the fall. Boy, what a difference. It's a good product, right? But what I tell you? I'll tell you, it's good stuff. I'll tell you, nothing. There's, the stuff that I have on the store is the stuff that I would use on my lawn. It's great stuff. He says, what a difference. I email you some pics, post, uh, clean up real mo. Are you sending me some pictures? I don't know if I can find them here really quick. I'm not sure. Did you, where, where, where are they, Tavares? I don't see, uh, any, oh, I do. I do see them. I do see your pictures. Oh, that, that does look clean. I gotta admit, guys. I mean, yeah, now here's the thing, guys. We we have to, there must be a slight point deduction for it not being Bermuda. But that said, yeah, we're gonna show these off. So uh, so yes, so his lawn did stay green all winter long. You can see here, see if this loads. That's uh that's looking pretty good. Solid green. But then what what you see, what was impressive about it is and the effects of his program, that picture doesn't really show that. This picture shows um the effects of his program. So if you look here, I'm going to zoom out so you can actually see it. You see his lawn, that green, which is, I guess it's ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass mix. And then over here to the right is his neighbors, which is like kind of falling off, kind of going, going dormant. And that's a clean domination line. Look at that. So if you wanted any evidence, cause I, I have gotten this question saying, Hey, you know, do the, do the products that, you know, you offer on the store cause you're a warm season grass guy. Do they work for cool season grass? Uh, there's your answer. There's your answer. So there's a guy that uses Turfplex, great product on his cool season lawn. You can see the neighbor not using Turfplex, the neighbor, the person that is using it and is keeping up with his mowing and everything else. You can see the difference in color over the um, over the the winter. So good stuff, man. Great, straight, great picture, Tavares. Thank you for sending it. I appreciate it. And congrats, congrats. I'm not sure if you're a Chiefs fan. I'm sure you, you probably are living in Kansas City. Congrats. It was a great game. It was a great Super Bowl game. I mean, it was a better game. I mean, I should say this. The, the national championship with the Bulldogs was epic if you're a Bulldogs fan, but it was, it was not fun to watch. It was kind of uncompetitive if you weren't a Bulldogs fan, but the Super Bowl was really good. I mean, it was, um, outside of that one, um, that one call, which, eh, you know, that you guys in the call, the call that, um, the, the holding call there that, um, that put, put Mahomes them back in the game outside of that. Um, then it was, it was, it was pretty good. It was a nice back and forth game and I'm, I'm glad Mahomes won. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm a Mahomes fan. I thought, I thought it was the Eagles. I frankly thought it was the Eagles to, to, uh, to lose, but, um, you know, it was a good game. Either, either team could have won it. All right. Next up is Will Dog. Let's see here. Nope. That's not, that's, that's a sidebar that you guys are having. Um, we got Gary Kellett Jr. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Glad to, happy to see you feeling better. I am feeling better, man. I'm not hundred percent yet, but I'm feeling a lot better between last week to this week. I am doing way, way better. The cold has left me and I'm doing much better. So I got my tea here, you know, I got my tea, but for the most part, I am, uh, I am feeling much better than I did, uh, this time last week for sure. All right, next is Edwin O. Edwin O's in the house. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Uh, hello, Ron. I just pulled the trigger. John Deere 180 SL precision cut email pictures to share. We got to clap it up. <laughs> got to happen. Congrats on that. And Edwin, I don't see your email yet, but I'll keep looking here for it. Let's see, because I mean, it's a picture of um, of hardware, so we can't, oh my goodness. I mean, you know what? He took a night, guys. Here's the thing. He took a good picture too. I mean, he, I'm not sure what kind of camera he used. Maybe he used like the like the um, the depth of field mode on the new iPhones or whatever. But this, that, here's the thing. I, I, I'm I'm a I am a sucker for good photography and I'm a sucker for real mowing. And uh, this is not a Toro, but I, I got to tell you, this is uh, this is clean. That's clean. Look at that. He's got it on the lawn. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom out here so you can actually see the um, got the light addition to it. But uh, that's nice, man. Looks like a nice pickup. Mower looks good. How many blades is that? I don't, I'm not familiar with my John Deere's. I am with the Toros. That looks like, 
It's at least an, at least an eight blade, maybe higher count. But yeah, it looks good, man. It looks like a really clean mower. Congrats again. Congrats again. We'll clap it up again for you. Congrats on the acquisition and great picture. Nice composition. I like it. it looks good. It looks good. So you got to keep us posted as far as how uh, how it does on the on the lawn. Looks like you've already taken it for a test for a test drive. You said now what? Uh, LOL. Do I scalp before it greens? Um, or do I wait until it greens up? Either way, you can, I mean, it looks like to me from that picture that you sent, it looks like it's starting to green up to me. Like that is, um, like that looks like you've got some, some green in there in the lawn from what I'm seeing, Edwin. So yeah, if you wanted, I mean, it looks like the grass is already waking up. So if you wanted to scalp that, you could, what I will tell you is this, is if you're going to, um, if you've not yet gotten the mower sharpened, um, I mean, first of all, Thing one, if you have another mower you can use to scalp, do that. But if you're going to use that mower to scalp, do the scalping now and then get it sharpened so that you got a fresh edge on it, so you're good to go for the for the season. And uh, it's it's really it's really your call. I mean, your lawn is greener than most um, this time of year, at least around here anyway. So yeah, if you if you wanted to scalp, you absolutely you absolutely could. Just be prepared to get it sharpened after you're after you're done doing that. That's the only thing I would I would say. The only negative. It's it's really up to you. Again, guys, scalping is not strictly necessary. You don't have to scalp your lawn. It's not like you're committing some cardinal sin. I mean, most people don't uh, don't scalp their lawns, but it does. Um, it's a good way to get rid of thatch. It's a good way to clean up the lawn, it, and you do get the lawn to green up a bit faster if you scalp versus not scalping. So those are the reasons why I am a fan of it. All right, so we got some questions here, some comments here in from the Instagram. I got to go over here real quick and take those. So ATLM3 says Prodiamine going down tomorrow. It's awesome. And then we got Kelly McCoy says, I just purchased my purchased my first powered real mower, True Cut H20. Good choice. You know, you can't hear this, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna clap it up for you anywhere here on the live stream. You can hear that? Good job. This is obviously I'm very easier to use it. Should I start the year with a scalp? If so, when I live in Brazelton, Georgia. It's okay, so it's up to you. Um, should you start with season with a scalp? If you're asking me, yes, I am a fan of scalping your lawn. Um, as, as a way just to get things going. Now, it's a lot of work. Uh, and the, fact, the thing is, you just got the mower. So I don't, I mean, it's, it's probably sharp already. So depending on, on how aggressively you go with the scalp, you, you, you're going to be need to be prepared to have to get it sharpened after you go through all the scalping work. But if you're asking me, would I do it? Yes. Yes, I would. But congrats on the mower, man. That's pretty awesome. Brazelton, that's not too far away. And then HLM3 says, um, yeah, we're already answered this question. But yeah, Kelly, congrats on the new mower, man. The the True Cut's a great mower. Um, you know, it's, it's, you actually you actually got one because they're pretty hard to come by this year. You know, with uh, with the supply chain and everything. So that's uh, that's that's good. And then we got another question here from Mayan152. He says, should I put down PGF balance on on new dormant sod before um, before paying it before putting it down or afterwards? Um, Okay, what I would do, regardless of the fertilizer you're using, so if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do fertilizer, what I would say is, um, do your prep work. So do your prep work, fertilize, and then put the sod down on top of that. So I would do, I would not, I mean, I, I would not put the put the new sod down and then put the fertilizer. If you're talking about a granular on top of it. So I would, if you have like a like bare lawn, I would put your fertilizer down, like apply it at whatever rates is correct for the product you're using, and then lay your sod down, get it um, set, water it in, and then just wait. That is uh, that is how I would do it. I would sandwich the fertilizer or your fertilizer biosimilars, anything else you want to apply, anything that's soil-based, I would do that prior to um, prior to putting the sod down. Now, afterwards, you know, a couple of weeks in, if you want to get out there and you want to spray with like um, like the carbon kit, you want to spray like a, like a, bio, a liquid biosimilant product, then that that you could spray on the sod, but the, if it's a granular fertilizer, like put it down prior to the sod um, going in. That's what that is what I would do. All right, Archie Amos is up next. He says, uh, "Evening, young man. I did my scalp today with my new Ego Sense IQ. Nice new mower. So we'll give it a clap. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like a mower." Um, we'll do my pre-emergent tomorrow. Nice. Very, very cool. I gotta look it up. What is this? What, what pray tell is the ego sense IQ? Inquiring minds want to know. Um, maybe I'll get the wrong thing. Oh, new self-propelled. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, self-propelled cut. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's this guy. Okay. It's cool. It's cool, man. So you got like an electric powered, um, mower. So if you guys want to see what he is working with, I think this is correct. Um, oh man. 
Don't you hate that when you when you when you want to replace something, but you copy you copy like the wrong thing, so you replace what's in the box. Anyway, whatever. This is the mower that he's got. This is the mower that he's uh, that he's he's working with. So cool. It's a good mower for scalping. You know, that's a uh, look. It's a clean looking mower. Looks sharp. Looks sharp. Nice, uh, nice uh, Archie. Very, very cool. And you're gonna get your pre-emergent down after the scalp. I dig it. I dig it. Congrats on the on the new mower and uh, good job on getting your pre-emergent your pre-emergent application down. And then Edwin uh, O says, um, nice, here's some pics. Um, and then he says, by the way, Celebration and Tahoma are my grasses. Yeah, it looks it looks good, man. The, I, I gotta tell you, it's, it's already greening up. You're ahead of the curve and the lawn is looking looking great, Edwin. Congrats on the mower, man. You, you are, you have no, you really have no clue how awesome your lawn is gonna look this year using that mower on it. As long as you can get out there a couple times per week, and you can, I mean, and you can also incorporate some Primo, some growth regulator into your program. You are going to absolutely love how it looks. It's a, it's a nice, nice pickup. There's nothing like a, nothing like a greens mower. Nothing like a greens mower. All right. Next up is Jermaine uh, Battles. And guys, if you're on Instagram, we have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those um, in. Because I, I just, I, I'm like jumping between the two areas. If I see a question, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll definitely hit you up. I'm not trying to ignore you guys or anything. All right, Jermaine says, hey, Ron. Hey, Jermaine. Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. And uh, you're very welcome, Calvin. And Gary Kellett Jr. says, Ron, I have cool season. When is a good time to use your bio stimulant? I do have a flow zone, but I'm not sure how many times per month to apply. If you have cool season grass, your, your lawn is green. You know what I mean? If you're out there mowing it, you can apply it now. So there's there's two classes, um, Gary. There's two two categories. So I will show you. We can take. We can go for a ride. We'll go for a ride to the store. You go to the Demiramichi Green Biosimilance section. If you are doing, you're talking about granular um, biosimilance, like Essential G. You can do this every month. You know, every month, year round, as long as the ground is not frozen where you are. If the ground's frozen, you shouldn't apply um, this. But then again, you really should be applying anything because the ground's frozen. As far as liquids, if your lawn is is green, like you're out there mowing it, you're actively mowing it, then you can use the uh, the carbon kit. So release zero neutral kelp and biospectrum. Um, and as far as how often I would use these, twice per month. So once at the beginning of the month and once on the 15th. I, I do that because I also spray my fertilizer and my growth regulator on those same intervals. First of the month, 15th of the month. So uh, as far as the granular, uh, essential G, that's once per month. So essential G once per month, the liquids, um, you can apply them once per month, but you can also, but I do them every every couple of weeks whenever I'm out there on the lawn, again, do my fertilizer and doing my my Primo. When you're, as far as whenever you're spraying, do I have it around here? Yeah, is whenever whenever you're spraying the, uh, the liquids, the carbon kit, you're gonna wanna use a foliar spray tip. So um, this one from, here you guys go on Graham, you guys can see that, this guy. This one from T-Jet is the one that I would recommend, uh, you know, for your flow zone. Now they, um, the flow zone does not by default come with the attachment that you need to be able to use that. So you check on their website, there's an adapter they make that you will need. Um, and then that spray tip is what I would recommend. And actually, I believe if you buy the adapter, I think it comes with a, I'm not sure if it's a T-Jet, but it comes with a, a, a follow your tip. So you might be able just to go with that. But if you're looking for um, the one that I just showed there, I will link it for you here in the chat. That's the only other thing. But yeah, to answer your question, the granular once per month, the liquids um, every couple of weeks is what um, is what I do. Gary Kellett Jr. And there you go. Great question. And as far as the as far as the pressure um, with that with that. That uh, spray tip, the low. You want to you want to be running it on the on the lower setting. I mean, I have the yard mastery sprayer, and I, I just run it on the low setting. So I'm not sure if you have like the five dollar flow zone, what what the lowest one is, but uh, trend towards the lower side, not the higher uh, pressure settings um, for that spray tip. Next up is Tom Hoffenkamp. He says, "Happy Friday, y'all." Best wishes for consistent warm weather. Uh, we got teas of 70 degrees. We're back with the chilly weather for the next two weeks. Slow motion, green up is the result. Thanks, SoCal. Well, we're getting our cold weather tonight and tomorrow night, and then it's going to be warm or warmer, a lot warmer um, after that. You know what I mean? So I, I don't, I don't want to jinx us, but I think, I think we are on, on the, uh, on the right path here, uh, on Tom. So you never know. You know, we, if, if you, if you ask nice enough. We here in Georgia might send some good thoughts over to you in SoCal and, you know, send some of our warm weather that way. You know, maybe. We might be able to make that happen. 
Uh, next up is uh, Randall Lard. When Randall Lard, he says, um, "Hey Ron, glad to be a new Academy member. Glad to have you." He says, uh, "Work calls for the next thirty days straight. So next time I see the lawn, uh, I hope it's greening up. Enjoying the show. Awesome, Randall. Again, thank you for joining the Academy. Hope you're getting some value out of it. I know you're asking a lot of questions, which is perfect. Exactly what we want to see." In the Facebook group, you know, every you know, I'm there to help out. The other guys and gals that are in there that have a lot of experience are also there to help out. So, so yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. And um, you're right. 30 days from now, if you're, you know, I'm sure if you're working offshore, you're somewhere where you're not going to be home. Within 30 days, when you get back, you're going to have uh, you're gonna have your work cut out for you as far as uh, getting getting on the good foot with all the mowing, right? So, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So we have a question here from the Instagram from Chase Matt. He says, "Hey Ron." I really want to reel mow my lawn, but my front yard is very steep, sometimes hard to even cut with a rotary. Any way to use a reel mower? What's your opinion? <laughs> so it depends. How how steep is very steep? So I, I've got a couple of videos on my channel on mowing a slope with a true cut and also with a greens mower. And both of those work well on my lawn, on my sloped lawn. The true cut works better because it has the rubber wheels, a little bit better traction, but the greens mower works just fine. As a matter of fact, the greens mower is what I primarily cut the front lawn with. So a real mower absolutely can work on a slope. Depends on the kind of slope that you're dealing with. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a link here. Um, well, I don't, again, I'm not sure if you can, this is gonna be clickable on Instagram, but, um, but I will put a video here in the chat uh, showing you um, a, a greens mower. If you just go to like to my YouTube channel and look up like Ron Henry slope, like S L O P E, look up slope. Um, you'll see a couple of videos that'll come up. So you'll see this one. And for those of you guys that are on YouTube, if you guys care as well too, this is the slope video for the greens master, that guy. And if you just want to see a video where I'm not talking, like you just you just really can't stand to hear me talk. And all you want to see is like seven or eight minutes of just beautiful, beautiful real mowing with a Greensmaster 1600 on a slope lawn, then this, this one is for you. This is like the ASMR, um, like real mowing video, you could say. I should, I should retitle it that, but that's it. That's me from mowing up the slope with the, um, with the Greens mower. No talking, no commentary, just, just a nice early morning mow with that on the slope. So it does work. Absolutely fine. It depends on the slope. So if you look at that video, which I just linked in the chat, or you go to my channel, look at the video, uh, look at how my slope is. If it's like that, it can work. If you're talking about something that's, you know, a, a serious grade, then maybe not, you know? So it, it, it the, like anything else, it depends, man. It depends. I don't, have, I don't have a picture of your lawn, unfortunately. So I can't tell you, I can't give you my thoughts whether or not you, a real mower is gonna work well or not. But if, looking at my, that video, it should give you some idea as far as what you can, um, what you can expect for a real mower and a slope lawn. They can work well, it just depends on the lawn. All right, next up is G Ray. He says, will Caravan G insecticide slash fungicide damage newly sprouted ryegrass? It shouldn't, no, it shouldn't, as long as it's, as long as it's applied at the correct rates. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have a negative impact on your on your ryegrass. You know, it's, a, it's um, yeah, no, shouldn't be a problem at all, uh, G Ray. Um, and if you look uh, at the in, on the product descriptions, if you go to the to Golf Horse Lawn Store and look up Caravan, um, the product descriptions have uh, they have application rates, but there's also has the rate that that when when I was using that product, the rate that I like to use, and uh, yeah, you should you should be good to go. Just read the label and apply it per label, water it in, and you'll be uh, you'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. It, it's it shouldn't it shouldn't have a negative effect against your uh, against your ryegrass. All right, next up is B. Bailey. Uh, no problem, Chase. You're very, very welcome, sir. Happy to help out. B. Bailey's up next. He says, I appreciate you sending the emails on the products you have in stock. Added bonus, you really respond to those emails. That is awesome. Have a great year, uh, everyone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, would, it wouldn't be cool if I just said, hey, guys, here's like, I got all this cool stuff in stock. Go buy it. And then if you have a question about it, like, I'm good enough to email you, but I'm not good enough to answer your questions. I mean, that's that's not cool, right? So... So yeah, I mean, I, again, I enjoy interacting with you guys because it does a couple of things. One, um, it, it lets me know what kinds of issues you guys are dealing with. Like what are the problems you're facing, like the challenges? So I can, it gives me ideas for content and, um, and it's just, it's just good support, right? Like if you, if you guys, you know, decided to, to, to buy from the store, I mean, yeah, I want to provide a, a great experience and the great experience doesn't mean, doesn't end with you guys just, you know, you know, giving me, giving me some money for the products it, I want, I, 
in, in addition to you guys supplying the products, I want you to get the result because that's what that's what you're what you're paying for. The products are just a means to an end. Like you know, the fertilizer. Like again, if if I could if I could bottle mowing and a green lawn in a bottle, there'd be no need for anything else, right? But unfortunately, you can't do that. So the the products are a means to you getting the lawn that your neighbors are going to end me. That's that's what I'm after. So I want to make sure that when you get the stuff, that you have questions, I'm I, I can answer it, um, and that you're using them properly, and that you're mowing, you're doing all the stuff you need to do to get the best possible results. So yeah, I mean, I, I do my best to respond to emails. If you guys email me and I don't answer, normally, I'd say this, if like three days go by and I don't and I don't respond to your email, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's literally because I get a lot of email and I the time when I have to to, to answer, um, you know, email from the store is is somewhat limited. So, you know, just just know if, if after three days go by, you email me and I, didn't, and I didn't respond, email me again. You're not gonna make me mad. I will, um, I'll, I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'll apologize. First thing I'll do is I'll apologize. Sorry for missing your email. And here's what I think. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad you find that useful. Um, B Bailey. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll just continue to do that. I mean, I try not to spam you guys too much as far as sending out, um, messages, but a big part of the questions I got, um, were around, um, product availability. So when stuff finally does come back in stock, I, I like to send out uh, a message to let you guys know you can, you can go grab it. So thanks for the feedback and the kind words it means a lot. All right, Love to Weld is up next. It says, hey, Ron, I'm wondering, instead of scalping, which I can't go below one inch with the Honda mower, can I scarify the greenworks and use the mower to pick up uh, the browns? Thank you. Yeah, that's an option as well. Here's the thing. If you are if you are regularly turf raking your line, I guess I'm I, I don't know what the um what kind of scarifier or what the what the greenworks scarifier is like, if it's truly a scarifier or if it's more like a turf rake, like what Alec calls a scarifier if you're doing that regularly like your need to scalp and the amount of material that should come out when you scalp should be not that much it should be, it should be reduced quite a bit because a lot of the the, the things that that thatch that all of the thatch and, and extra debris that that scalping cleans out you're you're taking care of that through regular turf raking so yes if you want to take your honda and then um you know cut it with the honda first and take it down to an inch as low as it'll go that's fine and then if you want to use your, your turf rake to go ahead and then clean up and, or, and pick up some of the debris or, or to, to do a bit more cleanup to get the, to, to lift some of that thatch out and then use, run it over with your Honda as a vacuum cleaner to kind of get that out, that's, that per, that's perfectly fine too. That option works. I mean, it's, it's, it's more works like a two-step process, but, uh, but yeah, I, um, I'm good with that. I'm absolutely good with that. And again, a question I would ask for you, Love to Wild, is so you have your Honda and it, the lowest it goes down is to one inch. If you're going to continue to cut it with a Honda, what is your goal? If, if you're if you're scalping it down to one inch, um, are you planning to maintain it at like an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half? Because if that's the case, if you can scalp it at one inch, you know that that might be good enough. You can make you take it down that low and then just and just call it good. And if you want to do a little bit more cleanup, that's fine. But you know, there's no need to go a lot lower if the height that you're planning to maintain the lawn is you know that one and a half inch, the one and a half inch range. So just just something to um, to think about um, as well. Next up is Trav Smitty. Trav Smitty, he says, I'm getting the Flow Zone Typhoon 2.5 ready for some liquid apps this weekend. First time running liquids, but we will see, LOL. Okay, so, so, okay, so uh, Trav, to make sure you get a good result, if you've not calibrated your sprayer, and again, it's, it sounds like it's complicated, but it's really not, I would, I would almost, I would implore you, I'd beg you to take some time, take like five minutes, and um, calibrate the sprayer so that you know how much product or what your walking pace needs to be when you're when you're 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 spraying stuff on the lawn. So most products most products have a dilution rate of um, whatever it happens to be with one gallon of water sprayed over a thousand square feet. So take for example Primo Max for hybrid Bermuda grass. Um, the application rate is 0.25 to point just under 0.4. Um, mixed with a gallon of water sprayed over a thousand square feet. So if you have a four gallon backpack sprayer, which is what you have with the Typhoon 2.5, that four gallon backpack sprayer should cover 4,000 square feet. The way you know you're doing that is if you can, um, if you can, you can couple ways you can do it. You can put a gallon of water or gallon material in the, in the sprayer. I don't really like this method because, because most sprayers don't really um, truly like they, they're not typically capable of, of emptying themselves completely out. You could mark off a 20 by 50 foot section of your lawn. There's a thousand square feet. Put just a gallon of just water in it. Put your spray tip of choice that you're going to be using to spray the products on the sprayer. And then simply 
you know, start walking the lawn. And by the time you get through that 20 by 50 section, that, that thousand square foot section, that should be, it should be empty. That's one way of doing it. Or you can use uh, the method that I show in this video, which is, um, which also shows you how to, um, to calibrate your, your sprayer. So that's a, a huge, using liquids is not hard. Getting a great result with liquid products is not difficult at all. The, the, the thing that is, that is vital, that is critically important to you getting a good result when spraying liquids on your lawn is, um, is make sure you, that your, your sprayer is calibrated, meaning that you're running it at the correct pressure um, with the correct spray tip and that you're putting out the amount of product that you think you're putting out over the time period that you think you're putting it out. Because if you don't do that, you're either gonna be over applying and, or under applying products. And if you're dealing with like biostimulants, not as huge a deal. If you're dealing with herbicides, you can damage the lawn. If you're dealing with fertilizer, you can damage the lawn. So it's um, it doesn't take long to do. It's not difficult to do. And I will, um, yeah, here we go here. This, this video on, on, cali on sprayer calibration, take a couple minutes, watch this, and it will get you on your way to, uh, to getting the best result out of that, out of that flow zone. So let's see here, sprayer calibration video, kind of like, so what, what like a sharp mower blade is to real mowing or to cutting your lawn, calibration is that same thing to spraying liquids. Like you really got to make sure you have to do it once and once you once you get it down you're you're good to go I mean, i'm not, not trying to scare you but it's 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 a step that you should take to make sure you got that worked out before you go out there and start spraying a bunch of stuff on your lawn because otherwise you, you're not going to get um you could under apply or over apply uh, neither of which is good so there you go that links in the chat uh for you all right uh travis Smitty says uh, have you used the outlet verticutter and aerator cartridges wondering if i can get away with the verticutter to loosen up the soil a little yeah so if you the soil so here's the thing i have the soil roller the soil roller the spiked roller and the verticutter um they're both designed to help relieve compaction um if you can so yes if you if you have the verdict if you not, not the verticutter if you have a um a um if you have the aerator cartridge that will help relieve compaction. The verticutter is not designed to do that. So you know, to answer your question, if you're trying to use the verticutter to loosen, to relieve compaction, that's not what it's designed for. Like, it, like really you should be setting the verticutter to where it is just above the surface of the soil. Like if it's getting into the soil where you're carving big channels into the dirt, like you're doing it wrong. Like it's too, it's set up, it's you're setting it up, you set up too aggressively. You don't wanna, you don't wanna set it up that aggressively. That's not what it's designed, um, what it's designed to do. What I would say is if you if your goal is to loosen up compaction, get an actual aerator or use the aeration cartridge. Um, and that's gonna do a better job with um, with, uh, with relieving compaction. The aerator is really, again, it's, not, it's really just not designed to uh, to do that. And and the aeration, uh, the, sorry, the verticutter cartridge is not designed to do that. And the thing is the verticutting cartridge is among the more expensive cartridges from Outlet. So you really don't wanna tear that one up, um, you know, using it in a way that's not not designed to be used. So I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would. I would get an aerator. I would rent an aerator, or I would pay someone to come aerate the lawn, if that's what you are. You think that you need in the, to to help relieve compaction. All right, Ignacio Paez is up, up, up next. He says, "Hey, Ron. I hope you're feeling better this week. I am much better. Way, way better this week than I was last week. So thank you for the kind words. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thanks, thanks for that. And then uh, Travis Smith says, "One more like to get to 100. We're past that now. So yeah, guys, if you guys are enjoying the show." Uh, please feel free to hit the like button. It doesn't cost anything. Free way to support the channel. And I would really appreciate it. Well, I take a sip of my tea here. All right. Next up is Richard Taylor. He says, thanks for your help. You're very welcome, Richard. Thank you for coming to hang out. DH Designs and Painting is back. He says, I'm in Stone Mountain, Georgia. What month will I expect good looking rye grass to die? Okay, so this is a great question. So if you have, because you're in Stone Mountain, I'm assuming you've overseeded your Bermuda with rye grass. I will tell you that I have seen a lawn, because they've done it twice already in, in, in this neighborhood, where they put down rye grass, they overseed with rye grass, and they don't spray a post-emergent herbicide to get rid of it. And in June, it's still hanging around. Now in June, it looks like death warmed over. It's like like dried out and like hating life and it's all like really stringy and looking gross. But the problem is the Bermuda also looks bad. So both the ryegrass doesn't look good and the Bermuda doesn't look good. Neither of them look good. 
So what I would say is um, if you are, if you have a Bermuda lawn, if you have your ryegrass and you oversee your Bermuda with rye, next month is when I would get rid of it. So I would not wait for it to die out. I would get rid of it. What I would use to do that is Celsius. Like this is the product that I would use to get rid of your ryegrass in your overseeded Bermuda lawn. I would not wait for it to die out because what will happen is it, it's going to take a lot longer than you think. Again, it'll be June time frame with it still hanging around and it'll be mostly dead, but it'll be around enough that it's going to look ugly. And the Bermuda is also, it's also going to slow down how well the Bermuda, you know, fully greens up and, 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 and takes off. So I would not wait for it to die out. I would, I would, I would take action against it. And Celsius is, um, is what I would go with uh, DH designs and painting. I've seen it two years in a row and neither, neither time did it look good. It does not look good. If you just let, just let nature take its course and let the ryegrass die off in a Bermuda line, it doesn't look good. All right. Uh, let's see here. So Doug through z says, according to Ryan Nor, the Super Bowl issue wasn't the Tahoma they overseeded with rye and it wasn't fully established per the company that had planted it. Yeah. I, I believe that man, because it, if you look at it, like even in the first quarter, like big chunks were coming out. It wasn't like, it, it didn't look like where it looked like, it looked like if you took a, almost like a, like a sodded lawn and you went out and you started playing on it, like playing hard on, on a freshly sodded lawn, like how it was breaking up and just big chunks were coming out. That is what, how it was behaving. It didn't look like it was a, um, that it was like, like, a, like a, a flaw in Bermuda. It looked like a fl more of a flaw in how they, um, how they set it up. So not surprised to hear that it was that. Um, but, but yeah, thanks for confirming Doug 350Z. And um, let's see here. Um, Michael says, for FYI, the true roll was rye, overseeded rye on Tahoma 31 Bermuda grass. Sounds good. Thanks, uh, Michael. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, but but for the same reason, kind of like what, um, what Doug was saying, whatever they did as far as prep, it just, it didn't, um, it didn't take, or they didn't give enough time, or they didn't do it soon enough. Like in some way, mistakes were made because it, it, it compared to, if you look at like, um, like uh like this like soccer pitches during the world cup like those those are i believe those were all rye grass and those held up very well and even in passable bowls it hasn't the turf hasn't gotten beaten up that that quickly that early in the game so i'm, I'm sure i mean whatever they, i'm sure they learned from it it'll if they do it again maybe not next year but if they do it again next year or whenever it is it'll be uh they'll have the process worked out and it'll be better i mean the color was awesome but uh but yeah the grass just didn't seem like it it didn't hold up too well all right, next up is Jermaine uh, Battles. He says, have you heard of Celsius Extra? I have, yeah. So Celsius Extra is, if you take, if, if the way you can think about it is if you take like Celsius, if you take Celsius and Sedgehammer and you mix these two together, that essentially is what um, Celsius Extra is. The reason why I don't, don't use it or don't recommend it is because um, the, the best product for sedges in warm season turf in my opinion, is not sedge hammer. The best product for, for sedges in warm season turf is Celsius. Like this is the this is the stuff to use. Like the reason the label, the, if you want to know as far as which sedges it kills in warm season turf, all of them. Like yellow nut sedge, um, um, all the kalingas, globe sedge. Like takes care of all of them, and it also kills poa, right? So. Um, to my knowledge, sedge hammer does not kill POA. This does, certainty does. So it's better against sedges and it kills POA. So for that reason, I, you know, I find it better to have, to use, you know, to have them separately, to have to, to, to use this combination together um, and to have, be able to separate them if I want versus buying a product that has sedge hammer built into it. Because you think about it really throughout the season, um, unless I've got like, um, unless you're dealing with like some, you know, like some spurge in your lawn or some other broad leaves that are happening to show up in the lawn, like some dandelions. I mean, Celsius, um, but you should have to use this too much during the growing season. But if you think about like, um, like, uh, like sedges, like if you have any parts of your lawn that get very wet or you have like some nut sedges that tends to develop, um, certainty would be used during the season. Like for example, Celsius, I may, I might use this once during the season. Um, certainty I use a couple times during the season in areas where water drains from my lawn. So for me, I find it also an advantage to be able to separate them, to be able to use this when I need it for the weeds that I, tr that I target with this and to use this when I need it for the weeds that I want to target with this. You know what I mean? So, and because extra is not this, it's not, it's not as good as these two together. Um, I don't, that's why I don't, I don't carry it. And I don't really, I don't personally recommend it. I'm sure, you know, for people that, that all, all, if all you care about is some sedge control, the extra is not a bad one, but I mean, why not just get certainty? Cause it's, it's on warm season grass, it's better. You know, so 
so that that's why. But I have heard of it, but don't but don't um, recommend it or carry it for that reason. Plus, it's also a lot more expensive. It's a lot more expensive than Celsius, which is already already getting up there in price, right? So the extra is even more expensive than regular Celsius is. So, so there you go. All right, elevated times is up next. He says, is it okay to put down triple ten right now on Bermuda to get some nutrients replenished? It depends. If your if your lawn is if you're seeing some green on your lawn, if it, in other words, if your lawn looks like this where you've got you see how it's got like a lot of green there and you want to start fertilizing it sure it, absolutely if you want to fertilize that that i would not have heartburn i would not have heartburn about um about that if your lawn looks like uh, i don't know if i still have the video here if your lawn looks well you guys are gonna have to just imagine there's no rain here all right it's raining in this video but if your lawn still looks like that it's that kind of brown. I would not put down the triple ten yet. You know, it's, it's still dormant. It's not waking up. This video is from like two, like two or three weeks ago, maybe a little bit longer. If it looks like that, I would not. I would not yet fertilize. I would. You you want there to be you want there to be green throughout the lawn before you start introducing fertilizer. And if you're in the southeast United States, it shouldn't be that much longer for that to happen. Um, elevated times. All right, Latanja Moore. I remember Latanja. I met you. I think if I if I remember you, I met you at the. I think I met you at the at the turf park at the turf park gathering. So if you're the same person I'm thinking about, hey, he says, hey Ron and uh, happy Friday everyone. Did you all hear that they say the turf for the t Super Bowl was Tahoma? Uh, yes, yeah, so it was Tahoma over CD with rye. Um, who was it that just told me that? So Michael Salou was just saying it's it was the super, it was rye grass. Sorry, it was Bermuda. So Tahoma 31 over CD with rye grass. So. So it was a combination. It was a blend. Kind of like what you see at the Masters. It's like Bermuda with ryegrass over seed. All right, next is Robert Majoros. What's going on, Robert? He says, just want to say hi. So my soil temps are above 55 degrees. Should I be fertilizing or should I didn't see the rest of the question? Um, no, I would say you should start fertilizing whenever you're starting to see green in the lawn. So when it's beginning to wake up, then you can start um, introducing your fertilizer. So when you get the green fuzz, Yes, that's a technical term. We got the green fuzz on the lawn where, you're, where it looks, if your lawn looks like this, starts looking like this, that's a great time to start introducing some fertilizer. So it's not quite out of dormancy, not quite um, greened up. You know, I mean, even b before it even looks like that, but, it, but it, you have to see some regular green throughout the lawn before you start um, introducing granular fertilizer. If you want to start spraying some um some you know if you're just getting like a little bit of spattering of green here and there and you want to start spraying some some of the liquid biostimulants like um like the biospectrum from your green let me show you really quick here i can i can do that if you want to start spraying like uh like this like biospectrum like this is a good option um you know, literally anytime you're spraying liquids on your lawn, you can mix this with it, but the biospectrum or the carbon kit, which is uh release zero neutra kelp and this you can do, you can, you could do those, but a granular fur, I would wait until you are seeing, um, you're seeing a bit of green in the lawn before, or a lot more green, mostly green lawn before you, before you start doing that. You're just going to get more out of it. If you, if you wait just a little bit longer. Okay, Caleb Victor is up next. He says, can I use prodiamine as a post-emergent? Uh, no, no, Caleb. Um, prodiamine is, is a pre-emergent strictly. It's not a post-emergent. If you, if it's not gonna have much of an effect on a lawn that has actively growing weeds in it. It'll prevent more weeds from establishing, but it won't, if you have weeds in your lawn currently, it's not gonna do a whole lot for that. The, the only pre-emergent, I mean, there's not the only one, but a pre-emergent that I'm very familiar with that has some post-emergent qualities to it is a product called dithiapir or, or, or a pre-emergent with the active ingredient dithiapir. So this guy, if you go here to shop and then weed killer and then search for pre-emergent, like this product, dithiapir, this is a pre-emergent that has a, a bit of reach back for young crabgrass. If you have some young crabgrass in your lawn, so not fully established, like living this best life crabgrass, but like young crabgrass, dithiapir has the ability to kill that. But prodiamine doesn't, so no, it's it's strictly a pre-emergent. If you're looking for a post-emergent herbicide, that's when you're going to start looking at these guys. So um, I don't know what kind of grass you have, but if you have warm season grass, Celsius and Certainty are what I like, and if you have cool season grass, uh, Tenacity and Sedge Hammer. Use a spreader sticker or a surfactant along with either of these for for best results. That is what um is what I would I would do. All right, we got Kyle Held in the house. What's going on, Kyle? Man, you coming? We you're gracious for your presence. Thanks for coming to hang out. He says, are any products too dark for the turf mark to be useful? I'm wondering about the Miramichi Green Biospectrum in particular. Yes. So if you are, um, if you're using 
like uh, like any of these guys. I don't have like a, a a way to show you what it looks like, but if you're using um, if you're using any of the products from Miramichi Green, so like the Release Zero, the 901C, the Nutra Kelp, or the Biospectrum, all of them. Actually, we'll show you real quick. That's a great question, Kyle. So if we go over here to Shop and then Miramichi Green Biostimulants. If you look at, I think I've got a screenshot here, a video, a thing here of actually showing it, me mixing it. Yeah, so if you look at that, you see how dark that is? Like adding turf mark to that isn't gonna do a whole lot. But you can see here, you see how, that's the one thing with the Miramichi products. If you look at the application rates on them, they're a lot more concentrated. That's why like, you know, the, the range they give for most of them is like between two to seven ounces. But even at that lower end, that two ounce per thousand range, you're, it's still, again, it's very concentrated stuff. So if you're using this, using marker dye along with it um, would not be would not be strictly necessary because it's not really going to show up that well, you know, because this stuff is so dark, you just you're not really gonna you're not really gonna see it. Now a case of where you might want to use marker dye, let's say you are spraying Primo Max and you're only spraying Primo by itself, right? So you're just using um, just Primo and um, and you just use just this and water and you're um, you're going you're going to town the lawn. With this adding some marker dye, it would show up. You know what I'm saying, but if you're using um, using any of the any of their Miramichi um, biostimulants, you're just you're. I mean, this stuff again. This stuff is so concentrated that you're just not going like turf marks. Not going to do a whole lot. The thing is, you'll see is that it, because it's dark, you you can actually see it on the lawn. You'll you'll even on a green lawn, you'll notice an area where it's darker, slightly darker where you just sprayed. So you're it. The fact that it's uh, the that that the that the um if the color is so dark, makes it easy for you to see where you have sprayed, but I wouldn't use turf, turf mark with that. It's, I mean, you're just, you're gonna be wasting, wasting the product. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work well. Um, Biospectrum as well, it gets pretty dark. This isn't, like this screenshot isn't a Biospectrum, but I think I've got one here I can show you. Let's see here, if we go, Kyle, we look at Biospectrum, I may have, yeah, so this is, that's before it's added to the tank. And um, yeah. So yeah, so I don't I don't have one of it by itself. I'll have, to, I'll have to get a take a picture of it. But yeah, it gets dark just like just like that. So it's it would be limited value. There'd be limited value of um of of adding turf mark to um to biospectrum or really again any of the Miramichi products because 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 of how concentrated they are and of how dark they are. So good good question, Kyle. That's a good one. Um again, for fertilizers, really, if you're doing just primo by itself, or if you're doing post-emergent herbicides, uh, that is when marker dye really for really comes in. So with, with most fertilizers, the Miramichis and also like the Turfplex, they're so dark that you can you can you can you can see them on the lawn when you're when you're spraying with it. So that's a good one. It's a good question. I've not been asked that one before. All right, next up is Mr. Higgy Pop. He says, hey Ron, happy Friday uh, and happy weekend to everyone. What's going on? Uh, Higgy, thanks for coming to, to hang out. Appreciate you as always. And then Elevated Times is up next. He says, Essential G versus Humachar, two titans. Essential G bags 40, says 40 pounds covers 4,000 square feet, and Humachar says 40 pounds covers 40,000 square feet. Which do you prefer? I will say that one of the, one of the application rates is um, very, uh, they're, 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 I'm not exactly sure how to, how to say this. Um, I, I the four the forty pounds over four thousand square feet is is a bit more accurate for a product that is um, compost and biochar. So humachar and essential G are not really a great comparison. Humachar and carbon pro G are a better comparison because humachar is basically compost and um, biochar, and carbon pro G is um, compost and biochar. And Miramichi Green also adds a um, some bacteria to it. They add like a like a mycorrhiza um, um, bacteria to it as well, kind of like what they do with the new organic fertilizer they release. Like that bacteria package that is in carbon pro G. Essential G is the biochar, compost, humate, silica. So again, it's like the, it's like, think of it as like carbon pro G 2.0. It's the newer formulation and it's not a good comparison uh, to humachar. The application rates seemed, I mean, to me, if you're saying that one 40 pound bag covers basically an acre. That's pretty optimistic in my opinion. I don't, I, I'd, be, I'd like to find anybody that's applying humachar at, at those rates. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what you just set a spread or two to get um, an acre's worth of coverage. You know, I'd, I'd say that 
along the lines of where of the rates that you're applying um, essential G or carbon pro G, that's a better, that's, that's probably a bit more reasonable. Like in other words, if I were putting that product down, I would apply it at the same rate that I apply essential G. And of the two, again, I've never used Humachar myself, but of the two, just looking at the ingredients, it's not really fair to compare Humachar and Essential G. Essential G is a, I mean, if you look, just look at the ingredients, there's a lot more stuff in Essential G than there is in Humachar. Again, Humachar is a better comparison to uh, one of Miramichi's older products, the um, the Carbon Pro G. So um, which one would I prefer? Uh, obviously Essential G, because that's what I use on my lawn, right? You know, I, I use Carbon Pro G for the first, for um, starting in 20, let me tell you, in 2020, 2020 is when I started using Carbon Pro G, and then in 2021, I switched to Essential G, and I've used that ever since. That's the that's the um, granular biosimilant that I've used um, on my line. And I love the results with it. I love the results, and then other other um, people that you know, other you know, customers that have that have used the product um, also love uh, love the results. So if you look at the reviews for it on the Golf Course Lawn Store, so I think the only product that has more reviews than Essential G is um is the humic max fertilizer and it has the advantage that it was out on the store longer than essential g has but if you go go down here you can see all the results from all these different people that have used it and and love the results that they get with it it's, again it's a great great product so for me um essential g that that would be my uh, my choice based on ingredients and uh, based on ingredients alone and coverage wise i'm saying i say the coverage is going to be the same like you're not going to get you're not going to cover an acre with one with a 40 pound bag of um of compost and biochar. All right, next up is uh, Trav Smitty. He says, any issues I could expect when plugging to Homo 31 into my Celebration Bermuda both seem pretty similar. I don't know. I've never seen to Homo 31 and, and Celebration together. I guess the question I would ask is, if you already have Celebration, why not just plug Celebration into Celebration? Like if you're, if you're trying to fix, like if you have some spots in your lawn, that are thin or you know, had some damage and you're trying to get that area to reestablish. Um, for me, if I already had a celebration lawn, which celebration looks great, it's a great looking Bermuda grass, why not just simply take some plugs of the celebration and transfer those into the areas versus um, introducing to Homa? Because um, from a color standpoint, they might be slightly different from you know, how they green up and go into dormancy. They might be kind of slightly different because that's the big difference that I see between, well, you look at Arden 15, Arden 15, Princess 77, and um, Tiffway 419, like the rates and when they go into dormancy and come out of dormancy is different. So for that reason, you'll have parts of your lawn that are greening up sooner than others. And if you're, what you're telling me is you're planning to plug. So I, I, I can't think of a good reason why I would use, uh, where I would put Tahoma 31 into a celebration lawn when you can just, just use celebration. You know what I mean? Just take celebration and just just take the plugs and just transfer them. That that is what I would do. Unless I'm missing something, that's that is the way I would go. Um, Chav Smitty, I would not I would not use Tahoma 31 plugs in a uh, celebration Bermuda lawn. Tanya N says, "Can we give a thumbs up?" I just did mine. Yeah, Tanya. Yeah, I appreciate that, guys. If you guys are enjoying the show, enjoying the live stream, definitely give a thumbs up. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a great way to support the channel. Uh, let me see if we got anyone here from the Instagram in the house asking questions or comments. We got um, the Maestro says, um, in Swanee, not far from you, when can I aerate? I would wait until the lawn is fully greened up. So April time frame. April time frame is when I would do an aeration, April or later. Uh, lawn Dad Official's in the house. He says, hey, hey, what's up going on, Lawn Dad Official? Thanks for coming to hang out. Appreciate you as always. Uh, thanks for all the support. And then next, on, next up is Scott R. He says, what are your thoughts on Simazine as a pre-emergent. Any experiences with it? Thanks. Yeah, so I do have some experiences with um, with Simazine, uh, Scott. So uh, Simazine is the name of the uh, active ingredient that is in Princep. So I am I am a fan for a fall pre-emergent um, um, like combination of using Prodiamine, Simazine, or Princep, um, and Image. So you take Image, Prodiamine, and um, Simazine. You mix those together. And that's a good combination. That's a, that's a, I mean, these days probably not as economical because everything, the cost of everything has gone up, but it's a less expensive way of controlling, of doing a better job of controlling POA in warm season turf than just using prodiamine by itself. So it's a, it's, it's good. Um, the only time I've ever used it again has been in the fall. If you look at my fall pre-emergent video from last year, I, I have a video talking about that and I actually have a live stream talking about using uh, simazine, uh, simazine image and prodiamine to, together to help control 
poa in uh, in warm season grass. But again, that that combination is for warm season grass. You don't want to do that on um, on cool season turf. You want that's for that's for warm season uh, warm season only. In the springtime, uh, prodiamine or dithiapyr is what I would is what I would say to use. So hope that helps, Scott R. Uh, it's a good good question. Good question. And uh, and if you have anything else, uh, definitely definitely let me know. Definitely let me know. All right, next up is Your Nightmare. He says, thanks, Ron, as usual. You're generous with your knowledge, and I really appreciate it. You're very, very welcome, sir. Thank you for coming to hang out in the live stream and asking some fun questions. Rough me up a little bit. Keep me on my, on my, on my toes. I like it. And then Londat Official says, yeah, I'm about an hour and a half from you. Georgia boys are holding it down. Yeah, man, you know you know how it is. We got to do it. We got we to gotta show these guys um, what's up. We got to keep it going. And then next up, we have... Um, Humberto Chong, he says, can I use Katana with Prodiamine? I guess it, I've never used that combination together. Humberto, I guess you're using Katana as a post-submersion and you're just you're throwing some of it in the tank with, with Prodiamine. I've never mixed that combination together to know if they would misbehave together. I, I am inclined to believe that it would be fine. Uh, what I would tell you is the, the same advice I would give when you're mixing any other foliar post-emergent with pre-emergent is if you're going to do that let's say you do a jar, a jar test and they're you know they mix it they, they play nicely together they don't do any, any kind of weird interactions what i would say is um if you when you spray that combination do not water your pre-emergent in don't don't run irrigation immediately after because um like most post herb most most post-emergent herbicides need to dry on the leaf to be able to take it up and for them to work so if you're mixing katana with prodiamine you would spray it let's say again like tomorrow morning and you would not run irrigation until the following day so sunday at some point if you wanted to run your irrigation that would be okay but i would not um run you know i would not go out and spray um prodiamine katana and then go run irrigation literally like 10 minutes later like you'd be you'd be working against yourself to where you get a good result with prodiamine but you're going to get a less than good result with the um with the post emergent with the katana so Hope that helps. It's a good question. And again, do a jar test. Again, I believe it'd be fine, but test it. I know Celsius and Prodiamine mix nicely together, but I don't know if Katana, if Katana does. Next up is Gary Gale. He says, hey, Ron, I live in Florida and I have Celebration Bermuda grass. It's about 85 green. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to use a roller that you can pull with your lawnmower to do some leveling? I'm not a, you can if you want, Gary. I'm not a fan of using um, rollers on, um, on your lawn. Like I've done it one time. And the problem for me, but doing that is that it, you're just, you're introducing compaction, right? It does, it does help the appearance. Like it does help smooth the lawn out a little bit. But um, for me, I would, I would be much more inclined to do top dressing to, uh, to level the lawn out. I think it's a better way to go about it. I would aerate and then top dress. And that, that is how I would achieve um, a smoother level lawn versus doing a roller on it because you're, you know, by design, you're introducing compaction. For greens, great, great idea. But for like your um, for your your actual lawn, I, I mean, I'm I'm not a I'm not a big fan of doing that. But it's up to you. You can you know if your your plan is you want to roll it now, and then you if your plan is like to aerate you know in April or whenever you decide to go about it, that's that's fine too. I'm just saying that if you are going to if you're going to roll your lawn, you know, at some point work into your plan to do some uh, some aeration to get rid of the compaction that you're, you're introducing from rolling a big heavy roller on it. All right, Donna Hales is up next. She says, what will kill Zoysia in Tifway 419? That's a good question. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm finding is tenacity and tricor, but tricor is hard to find. Um, here's the thing, tenacity, I don't, I don't, I mean, tenacity will damage both of them. I don't even know if tenacity will kill zoysia in Tifway. It might. I, I, I've never, I've never heard of that of it being used as a way to remove um, zoysia out of out of Tifway. Um, the other way around is easier to solve. Like, if you want to remove Bermuda out of zoysia, Fusilade will do that. But I don't know of a post-emergent that will do that will take care of get rid of zoysia in Tifway. Let me, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take this this question, do some research for you, Donna, and see if I can find. Um, and answer for you. I don't know off the top, off the top of my, uh, off the top of my head, unfortunately. So, I mean, you may have to, you may have to, I mean, if tenacity, if tenacity will do that, you may, you may give that a shot, a couple of rounds of it, just knowing that um, you're, you are going to damage the Bermuda in the areas that you spray the tenacity. 
but if you want the um you want the zoysia gone that badly i mean that that might be the way to go but again i, I it's the first i've ever heard that as far as using tenacity to remove um remove zoysia in bermuda because it is going to damage the bermuda too but i will research it and i will get an answer for you all right next up is east um yeah and then lawn dad official says that's a tough one because there are similar grass types yeah that's what i'm saying lawn dad yeah i mean it, it, the other way around like fusillade will remove zoysia will remove um bermuda in zoysia but the other way around i'm, I'm not aware of a post-emergent that um that will do that again good research topic right all right next up is east atlanta 13 it says what's good my brother um, I need to kill some clover. What do I mix with my dimension and certainty? Uh, you can use, um, you can use, uh, Celsius for that. You can use the, a lot of three ways like triad will do it. Like this should do it. Like Celsius should, 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 should help you to do the trick for that. Um, triad should also work for clover. So let me, um, I'll show you here really quick, uh, East Atlanta. So go to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, go to weed killer. And then, uh, so either Celsius, like what I just showed you there, or you can try, you can go with um, some triad, like this three way, either this or this is what I would use to go after the, uh, the clover um, in, your, in your warm season lawn. And again, I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, you said certainty. So I'm assuming you have, you have warm season turf because you would want to spray certainty on, on a cool season lawn. And given that you're in East Atlanta, you have a warm season lawn. So good stuff, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. It's a good question. Uh, Vahad Navi says, hi, Ron, can I know what the benefit of silica is and, and yucca? Yucca, I'm not aware of. Silica, the idea behind by adding, adding silica is that it helps improve the hardiness of the grass. It helps remove, um, to help improve the cell wall strength of, of the, of the grass. So the, the best way of thinking is thing of, of, of describing is that it makes it like physically stronger. Like if you look up, if you look up research um, papers on um, silicon, silicon benefits or silica benefits in turf, uh, that's what it's going to tell you. It's going to, that it's, it, 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 it improves the, uh, the cell wall strength of the grass, which makes it just hardier. It makes it more resistant to disease and, and, and that type of thing. Um, yucca, I don't know. I'll have to research that and find out for you. So you'll I'll have to take that one under um, consideration, Vahid, and I will have to get an answer for you. So uh, stay tuned. I will look out for that and I'll get an answer for you for next week. Um, but silica, yes, yeah, small amount of it, which is why you'll see a small amount like in Essential G. Uh, it's, uh, it, it just helps improve the hardiness of your, of your turf. So good, good question. All right, next up is HS says, uh, hey, Ron, uh, does it hurt to scalp twice, once in three to four weeks and or so, and then again before leveling in April, late April or May? In Austin, Texas with Bermuda. Thanks. No, it doesn't. I mean, if you can stand the lawn looking a little bit ugly, nope, it doesn't hurt anything at all. Uh, you know, you can do one you know, now, or like you said, in three or four weeks. And then if you want to lower the height of cut to make it easier for you to do your top dressing work, uh, that's, that's fine too. Yeah. that's not going to hurt anything. I mean, the only, the only negative is again, it's going to look, it's going to look kind of ugly, but outside of that, there's not really a negative to it. And a benefit of doing it is, is that it's, it is going to make it noticeably easier for you to spread your, um, your top dressing material around. Russell Hood has a question. He says, is it too cold for pre-emergent in the South with this cold snap? Is it too late? No, it's not too late, um, but you want to get it, you want to get it done. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, the, the longer you wait, the I mean, as we get into March and the, the longer you wait, the less effective it's going to be at preventing weeds. Cause you know, with the warm weather we're going to be having here over the next 10 days and the, if the forecast is to be believed, like you're going to start having, like the conditions are going to be such that the weeds can begin germinating. So you want to get ahead of that. So it's not too late, but I wouldn't wait. In other words, if you are in the Southeast United States, if you were anywhere from like North Carolina, like wrapped around from Georgia all the way to Southern California, there is no reason to not put down pre-emergent as yet. You should, you should absolutely should be doing that. Um, waiting is just means it's going to be less effective. So, uh, so yeah, I would, I would get it done, Russell. Um, I would not, I would not wait. Cause the cold snap in the South is only, like two days it's like tonight and it's like tonight and tomorrow night and then it's then it's going to be on a warm a warming trend after that you know what i mean so go ahead go ahead and grab your um grab your your pre-emergent if you haven't gotten any yet we carry some at the golf course lawn store under the herbicide section you know if you're in georgia it shouldn't take that long to get to you and then you can get it out get it applied and be good to go 
Next up is Jose A, not Jose B, but Jose A. He says, can I use the turf rake before my scalp to lift matted down grass? You can, you can, or you can do it afterwards. Either way, you can do, um, you can, yes. So yes, you can do it to help lift the grass and, and help with your scalping. That's, that's, that's definitely an option. Um, what I might do is, is do it before, do your scalp, and then once you're done, do another turf rake just to, to help pick up, especially if you have a turf rake with a, a grass catcher, like where you have a way you can catch all the debris that comes out of the lawn, then you can, then what you missed or what what didn't go into the grass catcher when you were doing all your scalping work, you'll be able to clean that up with a turf rake. So if your grass is matted down, doing one before, then scalp and then doing another one, it doesn't have to be immediately after, but you know, a week or two afterwards is not a bad idea at all, Jose. That's a, that's a good plan. Jose says, uh, never mind, you answered my question. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. I guess you answered that, you asked that earlier in the, uh, in the live stream. So I'm sorry. Sorry guys, it takes me a while to get to your questions. I just try and I try to give people a good answer. I don't want to give you like a very, a flippant answer to say, yes, use this or go do this and not tell you the why behind it because then you don't learn. And then you're like, you're just blindly doing something because someone said so and you don't understand the reasoning behind why I'm saying what I'm saying. So no worries at all. All right. Gunslinger heel is up next. He says, Hey Ron, sorry to be getting here so late. No worries. You're still here, right? Question, what is a good way to identify weeds in your yard? I have a program for my phone, but I don't know how to tell if it's accurate. So what you could do is this, use the program that's on your phone, there's a couple of them, use that, whatever it tells you, then go to Google and go to like Google images, like do a search for like whatever it says, it's, it says it's crabgrass, right? So then go to Google, type in crabgrass, and click on images, and then you'll have just a ton of images that will show up on your screen of that particular weed. And you can, can just compare, does, does what Google is showing me that what that looks like, is it the same thing as what I have in my lawn? So I would I would use the program on your phone because most of them are pretty, they're normally pretty good at, at figuring out what you have or at least the family of what of where the weed lives in. Um, and then using that and just using Google to confirm that what it says it is, is what it is. And then based on that, because you're already there, is, you'll be able to say like what herbicide and it'll tell you what uh, herbicide is best for uh, for getting rid of it. Good stuff. Um, and Lawn Dad Official is saying, just don't use a toe behind dethatching rake too harsh and will pull up the root system. Yeah, like dethatching, man, unless, you know, there's a question that, or a comment that came from Instagram. Unless you, unless you got like a lawn that's been matted down, it's just, I mean, is it, that is, it's been neglected for a long period of time. Like most lawns, you're a, if you're doing just like regular turf raking, you're able to, to do a lot of cleanup as far as debris in your lawn without the the harshness of dethatching. Like dethatching is hard on your lawn. That's really, that's, it's, it's, it's pretty hard on the grass, you know? So you gotta be really careful when you do that to, especially um, as far as how, how aggressively you set it up to, to not do more, more harm than, than good. All right, next up is, uh, let's see here. Yes, yeah, so I already answered your question, um, Gunslinger. As far as that, you said, um, I bet that's there to, to, uh, for the uneducated to identify weeds in your lawn. Yeah, so the program on your phone, take, the, take what the program on your phone is saying it is, go to Google and confirm. And then confirm that what it's saying is what it, is what it says it is. And if worst case, if you want, take a picture of the weed, send it to me, like email it to me. My email address is ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me an email there with the um, a picture of the weed that you got in your lawn, and I will give you my thoughts on it as well. But those apps are, are, are surprisingly really good. So you take one of those and whatever it says, just compare it with what Google says, and you should be good to go. Thank you for that. Uh, no name as far as smashing the like button. If you guys are still hanging around and you're enjoying the show, I know it's getting late, but if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the like button, it does help out, believe it or not. So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the like button ever so gently or hard, is uh, you know, I'd really appreciate it. It's a free way to support the channel. It doesn't cost anything. All right, next up is Lance F. He says, Masters coming up. I only watch it for the grass. Yeah, buddy. I lie. The players are great too. Yeah, man, it should be good. It should be good. I mean, isn't Masters is normally April, right? So yeah, it's not, not too far away. Not too far away. Hopefully Tiger can make a good comeback. Hopefully he stays healthy and can play. And if for anything, he just he just brings a lot of crowds and excitement to it, right? So it'd be cool to see Tiger or see your Tiger or Rory go out there and, and, uh, and, and do well. And of course the grass, the grass is the best part of the masters. And I will tell you guys this, not to go off on a segue here, but I will tell you this. So you having been there, haven't been to Augusta national, I've been there for during the practice rounds and what you see on TV, like you look at the grass on TV and you're saying, man, that is like the best grass I've ever seen. It looks incredible. TV doesn't do it justice. Like when you are there in person, it is like, it's just like, like the best I can describe it is 
imagine the best grass you've ever seen in your entire life, and it's better than that, which makes it harder to imagine, right? But but um, it's not really hyperbole. It it really is that good. I mean, the grass at the Masters is 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 something else, which it should be given, you know, the budget and the resources they have. But it's it's incredible. So what you see on TV looks it looks awesome in person. Even if you don't like golf, if you're like a grass geek, it is worth it. Go go during a practice round. Because you normally find getting tickets for that isn't nearly as bad as getting tickets for like the actual tournament, and if for no if for nothing else, just to walk the course and see like some of the best turf like anywhere, it's it's worth it. If you're a grass geek, you would absolutely love, just love walking uh, the grounds at Augusta National. It is incredible. It's something else. Combat Jigs is up next. He says, "Exciting! Just laid down some pre-emergent uncertainty for Poe today. The time is near. Yeah, man, that sounds like a good combination to to get rid of it to knock it out. Good job." Good job. Uh, Cooper's dad says, I used a Spectacle Flow early December, waited until the year mark with my new Zeon Zoysia. I read Spectacle Flow is very long lasting. That being the case, is spring pre-emergent really necessary? Uh, depends on the rate that you apply to that. Uh, you know, so yes, if you applied in December, you know, Spectacle reasonably, I mean, you can get six months of coverage out of it. It's, it's your call. It's your call whether or not you want to, to do a spring pre-emergent. What I might do is if you're going to do a pre-em, maybe wait till um, late March, early April and do dithiapir. Do like a, do like a, like a half rate application of dithiapir um, later on in the spring. You know, that, that might be a good option since you did spectacles so late in the winter time. You know what I mean? Because you're right, it does last a really, it does last a long time. Like again, even my back lawn, I don't have any weeds in it at all. And I did spectacle in September, first week of September, late August. So it's a great product. Short grass is up next, and he says, um, "Happy Friday." I if I only have a few spots of poa, should I just pull it out? You can, but it's probably going to come back. You can though. You can give that a shot. If you only got like a couple here and there, you can you can absolutely try uh, pulling it. Uh, Jason Harrison is up next. He said, Holy cow, we've been going that long. Like you, you came at the beginning of the live stream. You left with your family to go watch the movie, and you came back. And we're still doing this. Wow. I just got back. The movie was excellent. If you're a Marvel um, universe uh, person, I highly recommend it. Cool. I'll, I'll have to check it out, man. Because again, I, I have not typically been an Ant Man fan. Like I just haven't been able to get into the series. But uh, if, I'll take your word for it. If it's really that good, I will go check it out. It's um, it's it's a uh, it's probably worth watching if. If you say so, because the, the trailer looks good. The trailer actually looked pretty solid for it. All right, next up is um, uh, Cameron Hearn. He says, um, Poa is taking over. Hope Mr. Tryon or Tenacity will um, help kill it before Bermuda starts to green up. It's an option. We'll see, right? I guess you can you can see uh, how that uh, how that works out for you. As far as um, as far as the as far as the it taking care of Poa in your lawn. And then next up, let's see here. So Kyle held, so we got Charles Westmoreland says, greetings from Northern Virginia. I will be putting down my pre-emergent and carbon pro G tomorrow. I like it. It's good. It's good. It's good, solid plan. The lawn is coming out of dormancy. Yeah, so get your pre-emergent down, get your carbon pro G. And here's the thing, man. If you got carbon pro G, if, you, if it's the first one of the season, going heavy, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with going heavy. And if you want to pick up an extra bag or two and, and, and really go heavy with that, it's not going to hurt anything. Kind of like with essential G, it's really, it's limited by your budget, by your pocketbook. You're not going to damage the lawn by going um, going heavy with uh, with essential G um, on, your, on your lawn. Great, great, great product. All right, Kyle Held is up next. He says, I went to the Masters with my grandfather when I was 12. I only remember Tiger on the 13th hole and the grass. Oh, the grass. Yeah, it's, it's again, it's incredible. It's like you, you can't really, you can't really describe it. You have to, um, you have to be there to see it. And it's cool. It's, it's something that's cool about the Masters. And again, it's been, it's been over 10 years since I, since I went for the practice round. Um, but if you, if you get a hot dog there, like the wrappers, at least that's what we're doing then. I'm not sure if it's still a thing now. But if you get like a hot dog there, the uh, the wrappers are green. Like the paper they use for it is green. Like, And the reason behind that is that if someone, like if someone, you have some hooligan there and they drop it, they don't put it in the trash can, they drop it, is that you don't have anything ugly showing up on camera on the course whenever they're, they're shooting, right? Because it's green, it'll just kind of blend in. So I don't know if they still do that, but it was a, it was a, it was a cool fun fact or cool thing about the uh, about the masters and it's actually the prices weren't expensive like if you go to some sporting events like you get gouged um on food and the food at the masters wasn't was it was pretty reasonable for a sporting event it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't overly expensive and the grass was incredible i mean it was fun 
watching the practice round, watching. So I, I did watch Tiger, um, and it, it was cool seeing him. Um, but it's but the the grass was the grass was incredible. Grass was awesome. Like that is for a grass nerd. The the grass is definitely the uh, the highlight of Augusta of Augusta National. And guys, I think we are winding down. The last comment we got is from Atlanta, East Atlanta saying 10 to four. But yeah, Kyle, I completely agree with you. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. So guys, some some last minute housekeeping before we sign off for this evening. First of all, thank you guys for coming to hang out. I really, really do appreciate all the love and support. Again, so all winter long, you guys were asking about it. Um, Essential G is finally back in stock. We have enough now to where hopefully we don't run out. But again, you know, get it. If you know you're gonna be using it, which you should, um, get yours now. Go ahead and stock up on this for the season. It's not going to go bad. So get your essential G and also try the new the new fertilizer from um, from uh, Miramichi, the new organic. I've got some of it coming, so you can expect some content on that. You know, I can't wait to get it in my hands and actually see it for myself. I mean, think of it as you know, think of like a, a essential G. Some of the benefits of essential G with a purely organic. And again, it's an OMRI certified organic fertilizer. So you can use it on your lawn. You can use it in your vegetable garden. Use it anywhere you really want. Um, and it's, it's a it's in addition to being a fertilizer, it's a complete nutrient package. So for those of you guys that join the live stream late that are wondering what I am talking about, if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and go to our oh so carefully curated fer, uh, fertilizer section, you will see the black bag. The black bag of the, the new organic. This has literally been available for like two days. Like if you guys did your pre-order, it you should have got your tracking information. But this is like the new hotness from Miramichi Green. Um, this took a long time to come out. Like you guys know, like last year I was talking to you guys about this saying, hey, there's a cool organic product coming out. And it took all this time because like getting uh, the Omri badge, getting Omri listed is not easy. Like there's a whole process you have to go through for that. And they wanted to get the product right, right? So here we are, it's here. Uh, you can see some uh, some pictures of it there. That's what it looks like in your hand. So the prill size is around the same as um, Essential G. It's similar to Essential G. So as far as spreader settings, that's about what you're going to be rolling with as far as that goes. Um, when I get it actually in hand and look at it myself, you guys are going to see, I'll have, I'll have some content on it. You can see it in larger amounts. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool that we have like a pure organic uh, fertilizer offering, uh, again, from the mad scientists at, at Miramichi Green. So very happy. So the store, the collection is filled out. We've got a little bit of everything now for everybody. So guys, thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your Friday evening to come hang out in the show. Hopefully you guys got some value out of it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, definitely, uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment at the end. Uh, the, the blog post on the new fertilizer, uh, on, on fertilizers for the spring are going to be linked um, in the description of this video. And I will also have um, the links to the new organic fertilizer also in the description of the um, of this of this video as well. So again, thank you guys so much. If you've not done pre-emergent as yet, I'm going to beg, plead, implore you get some pre-emergent down your lawn so you're not finding weeds all year, and uh, enjoy this warm weather that's going to be coming our way soon. It's go time, man! It's exciting. It's going to be it's going to be a great time to get out there and start having uh, fun in the lawn. And let me see if there's any other questions here. Oh, actually, no, I can't sign off yet. I can't sign off yet. Two things. Uh, no Name is asking about the merch. So yes, there, we do have merch. This is the updated merch store. So if you want some cool, you know, golf course lawn store swag, you can get it there. Links in the description. And we have a question now from Elaine um, Kadar. So I got it, got it. I don't want to leave her hanging. She says, hey, Ron, what are your thoughts on Baron Brug Turf Star Regenerating Perennial Rye Grass Grass Seed with Yellow Jacket Seed Coating? Also, I'm in New York and the temps have been warm for our winter. It's February and temps have gotten as high as 60. Too early to put down a pre-emergent. Okay, so, uh, so a couple of things that we got to unpack with that one, um, Elaine. If you are going, so as far as the Baron Brug seed, I can't comment on that because I've never, I don't have cool season grass, but I will tell you, I have yet to hear anyone that uses Baron Brug seed that has anything negative to say about it. So it's not really an endorsement of Baron Brug seed, but it's, it's as far as, grass seeds go they are always well regarded they always you know the reviews on them are always really good and people that, that use it seem to like it so i why i haven't used the one you're talking about i imagine you would get good results with it having said that um if you're going to apply grass seed, if you're going to be seeding your lawn i would not apply pre-emergent because like the pre-emergent is going to is going to negatively affect the germination rates you get of that very expensive grass seed that you're going to go out and buy for your for your uh for your lawn so you kind of, you kind of need to pick which way you want to go. If your your goal is to 
um, use the new seed to help thicken up the lawn, maybe restore the lawn from some damage from over winter, then I would hold off on the pre-immersion, get your grass seed down, and then just simply take care of weeds with a post-emergent herbicide. So something like Tenacity or a three-way like um, like Triad, something like that can can work for taking care of the weeds that, that show up because we didn't do pre-emergent. But you really need to pick which way you wanna go. You know what I mean? If you, if you go and you do pre-emergent like this week, and then you go spray, um, and then you try and you know plant a bunch of grass seed. You're, you're, you're going to be working against yourself. You're not you're not going to get uh, great germination as if you don't do that. So, I would say decide which one is more important to you. If a weed free lawn is the thing that's most important to you, then don't do the seed. If um, thickening up your lawn from you know from the winter and just kind of that the, you know, getting the lawn to be full is the thing that's most important to you, then forego the pre emergent you know, put your grass seed down and then use something like, I'm gonna, I'll show you here, use something like um, Tenacity or um, or Triad or like a, or like a three-way. So the way you'd find that is you go to the golf course lawn store and then go to shop and then weed killer. Under there, you're gonna wanna use either Tenacity, which is safe for cool season grass or the um, or the broadleaf, or sorry, the, 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 the three-way. This is also safe for um, that, that rye grass that you, that you spoke about, the one from, um, from Baron Brug. So either one of these, 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 uh, these options are good for, uh, for cool season turf. But decide, decide which way is more important to you and then, um, and then you know, make your decision as far as what you're gonna do for your program this year accordingly. And then, okay, our last question looks like tonight will be from a mod from Memphis. He says, when should I start scalping? Is it too early? It's not too early, but if you want to wait till next month, you can do that too. I tend to break up my scalping into multiple sessions because it is, um, I have a lot, I got like 11,000 square feet and it takes, it's a lot of material that comes out of the lawn whenever you, um, whenever you scalp. So by doing it in a couple of sessions, I find that to be easier. This year, I haven't had to do very much because with all the turf raking I've been doing throughout last year and over through, over the winter months, like there's not a whole lot of thatch in the lawn. So it's, for, so in my case, it's, you know, I'm not like the scalping this year is not going to really be that bad. So it's the, to add, the best answer to your question is it's really up to you. You can do it now if you want. If you want to wait a couple of weeks and do it in the first week of March, second week of March, that's going to be fine too. It doesn't, it's not going to hurt anything to do it now or to do it a couple of weeks from now. So you're good to go. Hope that helps Ahmad. And again, everyone, guys, gals, thank you guys so much for coming to hang out this evening. Hope you guys, again, hope you guys got some value out of it. We got some new, um, some new toys, some new fun stuff on the Golf Course Launcher. Feel free to check that out. And uh, there will be um, links in the description of this video for any of you guys that are watching this after the fact, watching the recording later to be able to see all the stuff that we were talking about. Thanks for coming to hang out again. I appreciate all of you guys. I will see you guys next week. Have an amazing weekend. Take care.